All right, Reese, and welcome to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. From McLean Stadium in Waco, the 105th meeting of Baylor and Texas. The Bears have won two straight in the series. They've never defeated the Longhorns three consecutive times. Baylor playing for a spot in a New Year's Six Bowl. Welcome to Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. With Tom Luganville, Laura Rutledge down on the field. I'm Dave Pash. A beautiful day for football. The first weekend of December here in Texas. The Longhorns won the toss, elected to defer, so Baylor. The best offense statistically in college football will get it first, and the Bears will start on their 25 after a touchback. And welcome to the booth. We mentioned that there's still a lot at stake, uh, Tom, for Baylor, even with the loss last week to TCU. They can't win the Big 12, but they can get into a New Year's Six Bowl. And for Texas, other than the win against Oklahoma, it's it's been an embarrassing year for the Longhorns. Well, it certainly has, and everything's being evaluated today. Players, scheme, the coaching staff, Charlie Strong's got a lot on his plate today as he prepares his team for the season finale. And then going forward over the next two months, a lot's going to be made of the performance of today. And there's Chris Johnson making his second career start at quarterback for Baylor. Struggled last week in the rain at TCU, threw for only 62 yards, the fewest at Baylor since 2002. And here's Corey Coleman, and he gets a first down. He only had one catch last week for eight yards. That was for more than eight yards, but a penalty marker is down at the 28-yard line. He was a redshirt last year, played four games at quarterback, then was moved to receiver when Jarrett Stidham committed to Baylor. But Stidham is hurt. He filled in for Seth Russell. Holding. Offense, number 13. Ten-yard penalty from wow. the spot of the foul. Replay, first down. I don't know that I've ever seen holding called on the quarterback. Have you? No, I've never seen holding called on the quarterback. And now instead of a nice easy throw and sitting in third and short, you're spread out here in, in first and 20. All right, now they're saying it was uh, on Gus Penning, the tight end, even though they announced 13. Here's shot Linwood, who's uh, now over 1,300 yards on the season. He gets a few back, tackled by Jason Hall. Johnson is a sophomore from Bryan, Texas. Played very well in the second half against Oklahoma State in their win on the road a couple of weeks ago. Over the middle, the pass is caught for a first down by Corey Coleman. And the 36-yard line for 15 yards. Nice early rhythm throw here to the boundary off of the token fake, the slant route, thrown very well. These are the simple throws that were very difficult to accomplish last week for Chris Johnson in a driving rainstorm. They're going to run it on first down as Coleman gets the handoff. Really trying to get Corey Coleman involved here. He picks up eight yards. It's senior day here in Waco, obviously. Corey Coleman's a junior, but he ran out with the seniors. So he's going to the NFL. He's a Bolitnikoff Award finalist, along with Josh Dotson and Laquan Treadwell. He leads the nation in touchdown catches, but none the last three games. Here's Chris Johnson on the run, picks up the first down into Texas territory. And pushed out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Now, Dave, these are the types of plays that you don't necessarily get from Jarrett Stidham or Seth Russell from the 6'5", 235-pounder. The quarterback run game, he's so physical now. With a walk-on behind him, they want to be careful from a health standpoint, but this is his game. It adds an extra element for Baylor offensive. And Linwood driven into the ground by true freshman Brecken Hager. Texas has a ton of injuries on defense. Malik Jefferson, their normal starter at middle linebacker, is out with an ankle injury. So Hager, whose older brother Bryce played at Baylor, is getting the start. On second and 10, Linwood again. And he breaks a tackle inside the 30. Actually going to mark him down at the 30, so it'll be short. Third down and one coming up. Baylor 9-2, seeking the third straight 10-win season. And they try to hammer it between the tackles, and Texas Stout up front. Puna Ford on the stop, and he lost a half yard. Fourth down. I think if you're Baylor with how you've run the football at will on this drive, you go for it. 
You know what you're going to get out of Texas offensively with their struggles. Run the football, whether it's quarterback by design, hand off to Shockland Lib. Rely on that offensive front. And Linwood is knocked down right at the first down marker. He appears to be short. The headlinesman marking him short. Just past the 30. He had to get past the 29. It will be Texas ball. There's Jason Hall, the free safety, coming up to make the lick. If you take a look from the side right here, with the zone lead up front. And that's just point of attack football for Texas on the defensive side. Really good job by Jason Hall with his run fit and doesn't allow any forward progress from Shock Linwood right in front of the marker, close enough, Dave, as you referenced for a measurement, but it appears to be short, and it is. That's big for Texas and Charlie Strong. Longhorns needed something good to happen early. Heavy underdogs here on the road. They get a stop on fourth down. First time Baylor has not scored an opening drive touchdown all season. And so Tyrone Swoops, who started the opener but then was benched in favor of Gerard Hurd, will start this game because Hurd was not 100% coming into the week of practice. But Gerard Hurd, who suffered a concussion last week, is eligible to play. He cleared all concussion protocol, and we will see him today. Here's a run to Chris Warren on first down, and Warren is up near the 38-yard line. It's a gain of close to nine for true freshman Chris Warren. We see Gerard Hurd, who suffered a concussion versus Texas Tech. He has been cleared to play, practice throughout the week. Expect a change up with more spread elements with Gerard Hurd, as we're seeing Tyrone Swoop start this drive with Chris Warren at tailback. And Warren, who set the Texas freshman record with 276 yards on the ground last week, gets the first down. He had four touchdowns in that game. You've got to expect Chris Warren to carry a heavy load. Jonathan Gray cleared to play. Didn't get the start today. Deontay Foreman out for the season. A thin group at the running back position, but also a very talented one in Warren. Baylor stocking the box here, expecting run its play action, and Swoops lobbing it downfield. It's caught inside the 30 by Caleb Blewett. Blewett inside the 10, and he is in for the Texas touchdown. <laughs> 57 yards for just the ninth passing touchdown for Texas all year. See if he gets in here, Dave, as he's leaning and extending for the goal line. Let's check and see his knee. That is not down on that replay there, Dave. No, it didn't look like it touched. And that's the second receiving touchdown for Blewett. The ruling on the field of a touchdown is under further review. And even if the knee's down, it looks like the ball's over the plane. A great extension there, and Blewett, a former defensive player as early as last year for the Longhorns, moved over into an H-back tight end role, has the wherewithal to keep his lower body up off the ground as he extends, and again, point of the ball extending across the plane to the goal line. Tom, what does this do for Charlie Strong and Jay Norvell, the play caller for Texas? Given all that this group has been through, all the scrutiny, the seven losses being almost dead last in passing on the season, I and mean, they're 117th in passing yards per game coming in as we get the uh, After further review, the ruling here. on the field of a touchdown is confirmed. Well, more importantly than what it does for head coach Charlie Strong or offensive uh, play caller right now, David Norvell, is what it does for the confidence of Tyrone Swoops because Tyrone Swoops within this offense this year has been a package supplement player to the commitment of Gerard Hurd in the spread. And without Hurd services, they've gone to Swoops and it's been predominantly run oriented. To get that play in the passing game early, the confidence of that man right there, Tyrone Swoops, you've got to be excited offensively, get off to a good start. And may second guess now uh, whether you go to Gerard Hurd just because Swoops made that nice throw there for the touchdown. Nick Rose on for the point after here for the Longhorn. And so Baylor playing for a spot likely in the Sugar Bowl down 7 nothing early. 
Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. It's 7 0 Texas here in Waco. You got a three layered route structure right here. You're going to have the tight end there. You're going to have the fullback into the flat and then the drag on the crossing route. This is a good naked pass play off of a heavy run formation. And this is very well executed. He gets his head around. Tyrone swoops, lobs a catchable ball down the sideline to Caleb Blue at number 42. Very well executed, well designed, and a nice compliment off of what's been a heavy run formation for Texas. And Texas has not won a game under Charlie Strong unless it scores first. So that obviously was important. We get a touchback here, and let's bring in the third member of our crew, Laura Rutledge. Well, Dave, Kendall Bryles said that they aren't judging Chris Johnson, the quarterback for Baylor, off of his performance last week in brutal weather conditions, but they are judging him off of what they'll see today. Bryles said he wants Johnson to execute. He wants him to get the ball in the hands of playmakers like Corey Coleman. And Johnson told me his focus today is on staying relaxed, staying within his game and not getting away from that. He thinks he can be very successful if he does that. Well, nobody knows uh, what the weather was like uh, last week more than the guy standing next to me. He was in your spot, <laughs> Laura, at the game at TCU last Friday. It was rough on everybody, including Chris Johnson, had uh, those lost fumbles as well. And they hand it off here to Johnny Jefferson across the 30-yard line, a five-yard pickup before Devontae <laughs> Davis brings him down. It was a struggle last week for both teams. Nobody scored on offense from the middle of the first quarter until overtime. Jefferson dragged down at the point of attack. Bryce Cottrell made the stop. And so another third down here for Baylor. And the positive here for, for Texas is a field position advantage. If you can hold here, give that offense off of a punt an opportunity with great offensive field position. Big defensive stand. Vance Bedford, the defensive coordinator, as Jefferson is close to the first down. They're going to mark him just short. It'll be fourth and one. Baylor already went for it on fourth down in Texas territory. I'd be surprised if Art Bryles went for it here, right? Looks be very like surprised. To. Yeah, sure does. Now you got to punt this ball. And they will. Bryles is going to call timeout to talk more about this. That's the signal he was making toward the official. Let's see. No. Well, it looks like he waved it off. No, he's actually standing he? next to the headlines and been thinking about it here, and he's going to. And I get it that you're not going to win the Big 12. Oklahoma captured the Big 12 title last week, but you're still playing for a New Year's Six game. You don't pick this up and you give Texas a ball inside the 40, you could be down 14 0 five minutes in. Yeah, and field position comes into play defensively. So they're going to measure the spot here, Dave. We're trying to find out because to, to make a coach's challenge, you have to call timeout. But we haven't been told if this is coming from the booth or because Art Briles challenged the ruling in the field. So we're being told it is a booth review. So again, hard to tell. From that angle, let's watch the foot here. And where the ball is, you can't really tell where the ball is when the foot goes out of bounds if he's past the 35. But there would, would not be good video evidence, indisputable, that is, uh, to change that ruling based off of those looks right there. I'm with you. I think this is uh, the ruling in the field stance. And you're looking to see progress when the foot goes out of bounds where is that ball does the ball cross the 35 after further review the ruling on the field stands fourth down and so Baylor will punt it away they did not have indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt to overturn it 
So now it'll be interesting to see if Texas goes back to swoops or if Gerard Hurt, Hurt comes in here. Yeah, it certainly is. And hopefully for Texas, you're going to get tremendous field position to Jay Johnson, number four, the punt returner, averaging 11.1 yards per return. And Johnson under it, and a fair catch made at the 36-yard line. Texas ball and a 7-0 lead. Back in Waco, where Texas is on top early on 7 0. Let's bring Laura Rutledge back in from the field. Dave, we've seen Tyrone Swoops have early success for Texas at the quarterback spot. And Charlie Strong told me before the game that we could see Gerard Hurd as early as a second series. Now, Hurd has not had a helmet. He's not going to come in in this second series for Texas offensively. But Charlie Strong said the thought was they wanted to give Baylor as much to plan for defensively. They've had success early with Swoops. We'll see where they go from here. Yeah, and in talking with Charlie also, Laura, he, he said, look, Gerard's good to go. So this must be because of the success that Texas had on an opening drive. Well, and you want to make maintain the confidence right now of Tyrone Swoops. He just throws a touchdown. Doesn't make any negative plays. He's got tremendous field position here. He's not backed up. So why not keep him in there? Use Gerard Hurd on an as-needed basis. After a 31-yard Baylor punt, Texas running it, and only a couple on the ground for Chris Warren. He pushes the pile, though, out to the 39, a five-yard pickup, as we check in with Adnan Burke in the studio. Thank you very much, David. It is a Taco Bell studio update over on ABC Temple in Houston, the inaugural American Athletic Conference Championship. Javon Webb here at 7 0 for Houston on ABC. Back to you, David. And Tom Herman, uh, the head coach at Houston, getting an extension. One of the hot commodities in coaching right now. Swoop swinging it out on the flat to John Burt, and Burt has a first down to the 45 yard line. <laughs> Well, I really like this play selection here for Tyrone Swoops. The easy throw, the bubble screen, get the ball quickly out of your hand, into the hands of your playmakers. John Burt, an exciting young true freshman out of the state of Florida. This, this are the types of plays to get your offense moving and your quarterback feeling comfortable. Now, Texas has been very good running the football. They're top 20 nationally. The problem has been in the pass game. But if you run it well, then you get some play action, which we saw in that touchdown. And now a flea flicker. Swoops in trouble, gets leveled as he fires it too long. He had Marcus Johnson. There was pressure from Xavier Howard, a corner in the face of Swoops on the throw. Well, as you see Tyrone Swoops throw this football off the flea flicker, He's going to get rushed just off of the edge right there. He throws the ball, just doesn't put enough air under it for Johnson, number seven, and misses. You see the hit, the pressure underneath the chin defensively. Chris Warren, again, the freshman back in there for protection. That's a missed opportunity down the field for an easy score. Swoops to the air again on second down and 10, and it's caught. At the 40-yard line, DeJay Johnson dragged out of bounds at the 31. That's the 35th catch of the season for Johnson. This is just a nice flat route. Turns into a hitch right there outside the numbers for DeJay Johnson. Luckily for Tyrone Swoops, he was quick with the throw on time, or that thing could have gone the other way. But again, confident. Two out of the last three completed. Now you're in plus 31 territory. Offense is humming. The 19-yard pass play. Look at the numbers for Swoop so far. Play clock winding down. Back to the ground game and Warren in a huge hole between the tackles to the 26-yard line. And Tom, you got to wonder. I know Art Bryles has been selling his team on hay. We've got a New Year's Six game still to play for. But the loss last week to knock them out of playoff contention, you wonder if that's still in the minds of these players. That does it carry over into the next week? And then how you view your opponents a big component as well. Now they're overlooking this Texas squad with seven losses. Warren knocked down for a loss at the 29. Taylor Young on the stop. They actually ruled that his knee didn't go down, so he did get closer to the line of scrimmage, but it's still a loss, bringing a third down and about six. No, it's hard, Dave, to prepare a football team 18 to 22 year old kids and they're watching the tape and they can see another team maybe isn't playing well isn't confident and they don't go in with the same or correct mindset that they should early in in, in the going here the first quarter we're seeing a little bit of that from there one of the problems with Texas's offense this year poor on third down can they pick up third and six it would be about a 45-yard field goal from here. Swoops sliding up. He's hit. He escapes. And Swoops has the first down inside the 15. 
And at 245 pounds, Swoop's able to break a tackle and get to the nine for first and goal. Well, he's able to evade Sean Oakman, number two, off the edge of defensive end, working against freshman Connor Williams, 55. And the most important things Tyrone Swoop does right here is not throw the football late over the middle of the red zone. Tuck the ball, use that strength as a runner, put your team in position, maintain that scoring field position for the offense. You convert on first down here, Dave, and now you're in where that run game package for the 18-wheeler that they call it in Texas comes into play. Well, Swoops has 11 rushing touchdowns in the season. Many of those have come in goal-to-go situations. He's going to pull it back and throw. Boy, that should have been picked. Trevon Blanchard dropped the ball in the end zone. He's got good hands. He has a couple of picks as a nickelback this year. Should have had his third. Swoop predetermined this read and was going to throw it regardless of whether or not he was open. Great play action in the backfield. He threw it to Blanchard. It's if Blanchard was the intended target. And exactly what I said, Dave, that Tyrone did not do on the previous play, he puts his offense in danger there, narrowly escapes that one. Swoop's a junior. White right, Texas. Second and goal. He's going to run here. Design quarterback run. He's got the corner, and he's dragged down at the five-yard line. Taylor Young on the stop. So they're in third and goal from around the five here. And if you're Texas, you got seven losses. Are you playing this knowing that Baylor can score as if you're in four-down territory? Well, you feel pretty good about your defense right now in terms of how they've performed to this point. Uh, points are points right now, and this is a Texas offense that's had a hard time coming by points. So depending on where they are off of this third down, that's going to be an interesting decision for Charlie Strong. Swoops to the air. Has a ton of time, and it is incomplete through the hands of John Burton. And Swoops hobbling to the sideline. He was injured when he was dragged down in that second down play. So the Longhorns will settle for a field goal try. The attempt to get this to John Bird along the back end zone. He gets kind of nestled in there with the defensive backs, able to separate late, but an incompletion. And Charlie Strong not happy about it. Boy, he was really upset with that incompletion there in the back end line. Nick Rose on for a 23 yard field goal attempt. At the tough angle here, gotta make it 10 zip. And Rose puts it through. It is all Texas through the first 10 minutes here in Waco. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. All drive, no drama. And in part by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Last home game for the Baylor seniors, including 410-pound Laquan McGowan. He also saw Spencer Drango and Sean Oakman getting hugs for, uh, for Mark Bryles. This has been a terrific senior class. 11 wins each of the last two years, a pair of Big 12 titles. Nine wins this year. They trail Texas 10-0 here in the first quarter. As the offensive issues continue with Chris Johnson in the quarterback. And another touchback as we bring Laura in from the field for the latest on Swoops, who was banged up last drive. Tyron Swoops will be available, you guys. They were looking at his left thigh, and he was limping with a pretty noticeable limp when he came off the field, but then he was able to walk on it a little more easily and was able to run a little bit as well. They say he's good to go. All right. We'll see, though, if that uh, gives them uh, really a, an excuse to get Gerard Hurt in the game because they do want to play him today. But first, the, the focus is on the Baylor quarterback, Chris Johnson. And he's three of three, passing all short throws, though, and he's going to keep it here. Past the 30 and thrown down to the 32 yard line by Jason Hall. Johnson's a big guy at 235 pounds. And they're going to flex him out here and go out of the Wildcat. So after the eight yard run by Johnson. It's the direct snap to Devin Chafin, and Chafin has a first down to the 38. Our impact players are brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Well, it starts off skill versus skill. 
the impact matchup. Corey Coleman, number one, versus Holton Hill, the true freshman, one of three true freshmen in the matchup of the secondary for Texas. Flea flicker now for Baylor. Johnson will run, though, as that was well covered downfield. Texas did a good job. Duke Thomas read that beautifully. They were trying to set up a deep ball to Katie Cannon. It's really their only first attempt at a deep ball the entire day so far, Dave. Makes you wonder about the confidence that coaches have in, in Johnson to throw it down the field. And here's Laquan McGowan. And a great job to knock him down by Puna Ford. How do you get a 410-pound guy to the ground? You go low. Well, you have to go low, and you hope to get a lot of bodies around him as well. And that's exactly what Texas does. 31 for Texas right there coming through. Does a really nice job, Jason Hall. He's fitting for his run support. And on third down, Johnson keeps and picks up the first down into Texas territory. There is a penalty flag down, though, in the middle of the field. Looks like it's coming back. Holding offense number 55, 10 yards from the previous spot, replay third down. That's on the center, Kyle Fuller. Another holding penalty on Baylor, the second one against the Bears. You're going to see right there, there's your center, Kyle Fuller. As we let this play roll through, he's blocking backside, and he just gets hands on the inside and tugs. Now, it's difficult to see from that angle, from the umpire's angle, it would have been very, very easy to see. But that was Puna Ford. Now, he's in for the injured Hassan Ridgeway. They've had a hard time blocking for it so far, time. and they had to hold him on that last play. Timeout by Texas, third and 14, coming up for Baylor. Tonight on ABC, it's the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship game. Carolina at number 10 and top-ranked and unbeaten Clemson. A spot for Clemson, anyway, in the college football playoff on the line. It's debatable whether if North Carolina wins, the Tar Heels would get in. What do you got in that game? You think Clemson holds serve? I do think Clemson holds serve, and I think it's because of who the opponent is. North Carolina will have Clemson's attention, and if that wasn't the case. Here's a double pass. Links Hawthorne going to fire it downfield incomplete. Now Baylor having to resort to trick plays so far in this first half, and none of them have worked. Puna Ford had pressure for the Longhorns that time. Well, they have Jay Lee at the bottom of the field right down here. And the, the throw is there to be made. Now, you're going to say the safety from the weak side come over. They don't even attempt to throw the football down to number four, Jay Lee, until late. That was a touchdown they had given away. Again, another miscue for Baylor on offense. Just out of sync right now, Dave. That was Lynx Hawthorne who threw the ball. He's a high school quarterback. Baylor just moved. Another Bears penalty. They're 0 for 3, by the way, in third down. Ball start. Offense number 19. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. It's on Raekwon Davis for Baylor. So after the Bears struggled last week to score 14 points in regulation, only 62 yards through the air, the weather's perfect today, and they're still struggling. Fair catch made at the 32-yard line by Johnson. Well, Texas got off to that uh, poor start, getting blown off by Notre Dame. So they make the change from Swoops to Hurd and from Sean Watson to Jay Norvell calling the plays. Then out of nowhere, they beat Oklahoma after getting blown off by TCU 50-7 the previous week. Charlie Strong thought, Tom, that things would take off from there, but they haven't. They're 2-3 and three since that win against OU. And the loss that nobody can explain is getting shut out by Iowa State. That's the big head-scratcher. Nobody has an explanation for it. Not that man right there. Certainly not Sean Watson. And certainly not anybody on this team as a player is Jay Norvell, the play caller now. Throughout Hurd in the game at quarterback, and he fakes the pitch. And on the rollout, his pass, a one-hopper. That blew it incomplete. Heard as a redshirt freshman from Denton, Texas, who started week two against Rice. Against Cal, he had a school record 527 yards passing. There are definitely times where he provided a spark to this uh, Texas offense when Swoops was ineffective. Yeah, they certainly committed to investing in the spread elements to accentuate his strengths and mask his weaknesses.
On second and ten, here's Hurd on the run. Gets outside. Pushed out of the 38, picks up six on the play. Don't blink. Uh, this is the largest road lead in three years for Texas against a ranked opponent. A lot of times they're playing ranked teams in the Big 12 on the road. And this says something, too, I think, about Charlie Strong. The fact that Texas is still playing hard for Charlie late in the year. There's been a lot of discussion about whether he'll be back. And everything we've heard is really what everyone else has heard is that he's going to be back for a third season. It's, there are going to be changes on the staff. More on that later as Baylor looks to blitz here, setting up for that in third down. Heard rolling out. In trouble. And slammed down to the 28-yard line. Andrew Billings got back there to force a punt. You see Andrew Billings so difficult to tackle from his tackle spot right here as this play unfolds just does an excellent job at the point of attack versus 74 Taylor Doyle there and nowhere to go with the football and all of a sudden Andrew Billings in the face of Gerard Hurd now for the first time Texas backed up in punting situation and Billings one of the best defensive linemen in all of college football five and a half sacks now in the season. True freshman Michael Dixon will punt. And Hawthorne will let this bounce and it hit a Texas play around the 21 yard line. Or did it? But it hit a Texas player, but the side judge didn't indicate that. And so they're going to give the ball to Baylor at the six yard line. It goes down as a 64 yard punt. Now, now the officials are fixing it. They got it straightened out here. And it does hit a Texas player there right at the 20 yard line. It'll be placed at the 23 yard line. First down. It hit Antoine Davis, so Baylor will start just past its 20. Well, the season started with Seth Russell, and remember, he was taking over for Bryce Petty, an excellent quarterback. Russell got off to a great start, then injured his neck. Jarrett Stidham comes in, plays well. He gets hurt. Chris Johnson. In the second half, wins the Oklahoma State game. But they lost here at home against Oklahoma, their first <laughs> loss in this stadium. There's Stidham, who could be back for the bowl game, by the way. Play fake for Johnson. Tries to zip it in there to Jay Lee, and it's broken up. Incomplete. Now, if there's any belief in the notion that this is a plug-and-play system, there's some validity to that with Baylor. They've done it from Case Keenum and back at Houston under our brow to all the quarterbacks you've seen here at Baylor during his tenure. Johnson keeping it. And he fumbles the ball. It's still loose. Durango had a shot to, a shot to recover it at the 18-yard line. Durango was on top of it, but did it score it away from him again? Duke Thomas knocked it out for Texas. Johnson has had all kinds of trouble hanging onto the ball, and apparently Drangle lost it under the pile. It's Texas ball. Lost fumbles last week against TCU, and Anthony Wheeler comes up with it here. A takeaway for Texas in the red zone. Ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by Texas. First down. And Chris Johnson is down. You see that shot to the leg there. It was Thomas who made the hit, and then P.J. Locke forced the fumble. But they're looking at Johnson at the 25-yard line. Well, he takes two shots, one low from Duke Thomas, number 21. Then P.J. Locke comes up and take him while, takes him while he's elevated. And that's what really delivers the blow and dislodges the football. And in talking with Art Bryles last week and asked him, hey, if Chris Johnson gets hurt, who comes into the game of quarterback? He said, I have no idea. They have Zach Benham, a true freshman walk-on. They could move Lynx Hawthorne, a wide receiver, to quarterback. We'll see if Chris Johnson is back out there when Baylor's back on offense. Meanwhile, Texas in business inside the 20 yard line. And, and that's really been the, the difference with Baylor the last few games. They're minus eight in turnover ratio. They were winning the turnover battle you now the first eight or nine weeks of the season. When it hasn't been good recently, that's their 12th turnover in three games 
here as we take a look at Horth Hawthorne on the sideline. An option, maybe Corey Coleman in a Wildcat package could be an option as well for Baylor. Heard back to work, hands it off to Warren, and Warren is met at the line of scrimmage and driven back. Ryan Reed on the stop, they'll give him a yard, second down and nine. Here's Warren again, and in trouble in the backfield on another play. The Baylor's defense rising to the challenge. Reed pushes him out at the 19 for a one-yard loss. So third and long coming up here for Texas. For 92, Jamal Palmer, 96, Byron Bonds along the defensive front with a flag down. Does an excellent job stringing that outside zone play to the sideline. A penalty flag down as well. Here to be a late flag. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 95 of the defense. Wow. That penalty will be half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down. That's number 95's first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. So if you're Bo Blackshear, you just killed your team on senior day. You have them in third and long. Instead, you do something stupid like that after the play, and Texas gets the ball first and goal at the 10. Well, and these are the type of plays as Tyrone Swoops comes back into the game for Texas. These are the types of plays that are going to get you the opportunity to win this football game. You've got to take advantage of them. Must have said something. He didn't hit anybody. You saw him in your screen. May have said something to the official. Here's Swoops in the game, getting to the outside and getting into the end zone. Texas up 16-0. Dave, this is what they call their 18-wheeler package with Tyrone Swoops in the direct snap. Alex De La Torre at the fullback position, number 47, Andrew Beck at the other tight end position. Quarterback power. They ran three plays in a row in a goal line situation versus Oklahoma. This is the changeup to Gerard Hurd, and certainly very productive here in the red zone, Dave. That's 12 rushing touchdowns on the season for Swoops. The point after makes it 17 to nothing. And with all these injuries at quarterback, I mean, normally 17 nothing deficit is nothing for Baylor. But with Seth Russell out, injured October 24th against Iowa State with a neck injury. And then Jarrett Stidham going down in the Oklahoma State game with a broken ankle, although he could return for the bowl game. And now today, Chris Johnson, after fumbling the ball, gets hit low. And then the ball comes out, gets drilled up top by Locke. He's on the Baylor sideline. You wonder if the Bears can score at all, depending on who's in the game at quarterback. Will it be true freshman Zach Benema? There's Stidham. Links Hawthorne, a wide receiver who played quarterback in high school and threw that pass on a trick play earlier. He was warming up on the sideline. And that's Kendall Bryles, the offensive coordinator at Baylor. You see talking to Hawthorne there. And the surprising thing maybe, Dave, is that even with Chris Johnson offensively, there haven't been any attempts in the passing game to stretch the field with this explosive Baylor offense. So now are you going to manufacture with Lynx Hawthorne? We will see. See his numbers as a high school junior there were solid. And Chris Johnson can move from receiver to quarterback. Lynx Hawthorne can move back. Another touchback. Fourth one by Texas. And so Hawthorne is in the game. We'll see, is it Wildcat or do they just run their normal offense? Well, that's what we've got to find out. And from a defensive perspective for Texas is what do they do? They Do they load the box and dare Baylor to throw the football? Or, or are they just going to play in their base defense? Vance Bedford, the defensive coordinator. And, our, and Kendall Browse there, the offensive coordinator for Baylor. This should be a chess match depending upon how confident Baylor's going to be in Lynx Hawthorne as you see him set up in the shotgun. Now when you got a running back like Shock Linwood that can take care of some of your passing ills and we'll see how much work Linwood gets. He's not 100 percent though. He was banged up. Last week had only 58 yards in a TCU game. And here is Linwood with a huge hole off the left side. 
It's slammed down at the 42, but that's a 17-yard run for Linwood. Texas loses contain and loses the edge to the field side. A big run there, even though they had the numbers in the box to defend it. Hawthorne keeping, slips a tackle. Hawthorne has the first down into Texas territory. Bumped out at the 42-yard line by Jason Hall. The 17-yard scamper by Hawthorne. Kendall Bryles, a Royals Award candidate, one of five, goes to the top assistant in college football. He's in his first year as the offensive coordinator, took over play calling in the Cotton Bowl last year. As Hawthorne, or Hawthorne throws it deep and throws a pick. Right to Duke Thomas in double coverage. Thomas across the 35. And Hawthorne tackles him. The Texas players don't like it. And look out here. This is a 100-year-old rivalry. The Baylor players have come out of the field. They've run from the Baylor sideline. This could get ugly. A flag flies. Coach is getting in to break things up. Could not tell whether any punches were thrown. Some pushing and shoving. Flags are down. Some of the coaches for Baylor are trying to hold back the Baylor players from escalating things. This all stemmed from the end of the tackle on Duke Thomas, who had the interception. And watch how he's thrown down to the ground. You're going to see the end of the play right here. Lynx Hawthorne, who throws the interception, subbing in for Chris Johnson, throws down Duke Thomas, number 21 there. And then you see the push in the back off of the sideline. Well, Vaccaro stepped on, on Hawthorne as well there. And again, this is all occurring on the sideline the of the Texas Longhorns. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 18 of Texas. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. It'll be first down. That's number 18's first on Sportsman. See, watch Vaccaro the there. He came from the bench and he fell what appeared to be on purpose on Hawthorne. You're going to see him right there. He's not even in the field of play, Dave. Now watch him come off the field. He's going to come off and he's going to be onto the playing field here. Oh, that's just poor discretion right there, Dave. Here's the angle here. He gets pushed first by Locke. And Correct. Hawthorne gets tackled there by Vaccaro, so it's a penalty on Texas. The players from Baylor run onto the field after. This is a century-old rivalry. Baylor was pounded by Texas for so many years, but the last two years, the Bears have won. They've never beaten Texas three straight times. All these kids know each other, gone at it for years in high school. Well, and credit the coaching staffs and really the support staff, as you saw for Baylor running over there quickly to try and get a handle on that little melee. So Texas will take over on its 25 consecutive giveaways by Baylor. And Texas will keep it on the ground with Warren, but he's going nowhere. Stood up by Taylor Young. Oakman was there as well for the Bears. And what could be the final play of the quarter. Well, we thought that uh, this thing could get sideways, but that it might go the other way. Instead, it's 17-0, Texas after one. 
Tonight on ESPN, we get the Pac-12 championship game presented by Dr. Pepper. A rematch of SC Stanford from earlier in the season. Stanford won that game. Christian McCaffrey, a Heisman hopeful. And could the Cardinal, if it wins, get into the college football playoff, depending on what happens in front of them. Start of the second quarter, Gerard Hurd going to work. And Hurd getting out of the pocket and slides to the 28-yard line. I'll mark him at the 27, a pickup of three on the play. How about Baylor going scoreless in the first quarter? That's the first time that's happened since they last played Texas at home two years ago. So third down and eight coming up. Texas one of three up third down. Baylor needs a stop. Got to get some momentum back here at home. They jumped offside but got back on before the snap. Play clock at one. Heard on the rollout. And nowhere to go, so he throws it away. So Texas will have to punt. And Corey Coleman's going to go return punts normally. Links Hawthorne's the punt returner, but because he's playing quarterback <laughs> now. Right now, Dave, they're just trying to preserve bodies. If you're Baylor. Texas coming in four and seven on the year. Seventh in the Big 12 at three and five. Baylor at nine and two. Coleman under it. And fair caught at the 28 yard line. We'll be in a quarterback for Baylor this time. Find out when we come back. Well, Baylor is down to its fourth quarterback. Chris Johnson making his second career start injured on this play where he fumbled the ball and Texas recovered. Seth Russell and Jared Stidham both out because of injury and now Chris Johnson down. Lynx Hawthorne was at quarterback on the last possession. He threw an interception and we just saw him taking snaps from under center as they were warming up to go back out of the field. They were literally having a discussion about proper hand placement, making sure you ride center. Kyle Fuller, number 55. They're going to come out with a little bit of a different wrinkle here if they want to ask him to get under center and just flat out run the football. Now Baylor in that first quarter ran the ball well, 92 yards, but only 20 passing yards. Here's Linwood, and not much there. Maybe a yard. Let's check in with Laura Rutledge. Dave, I'm still waiting on confirmation from the Baylor athletic training staff on Chris Johnson's injury, but he was in considerable pain when limping into the locker room. And with Lynx Hawthorne, Art Bryles and Kendall Bryles crowded around him, telling him we have to get back to the basics. This could be your game for the rest of the time, so you're going to have to ask us a lot of questions. Penalty flag down. There was movement. That won't help the young quarterback. Ball start. Offense number 61. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Jarrell Broxton, the right guard. And this was earlier in our break. They're going over different types of snaps. You see Kendall Browse there, the white hat right there on the right side of your screen with Kyle Fuller, the offensive center. And it was literally there working with his hand placement, almost as if, Dave, he's never, even, even though he was a high school quarterback, taken a snap from under center. I'll keep him in shotgun here on second and 14. And he'll throw the ball here. It's a short pass at Coleman drop. Everybody too tight right now? Everybody's too tight, and that's the worst possible thing that could happen to Lynx Hawthorne because you finally give him the easy throw to the boundary to your greatest playmaker in Corey Coleman, and the ball's dropped. So now confidence affects everybody, and it rises for Texas on the defensive side of the football as we see another third and long. And Baylor in that first quarter, 0 for 3. On third down, they're one of the best nationally. Normally, they're going to run Hawthorne. He gets a block and will come up short of the first down. He got smacked by Duke Thomas. Another push after the play as Corey Coleman got shoved, but the center judge breaks this one up before we get another melee. Duke Thomas has been all over the place for this Texas team on defense. Did you see the tackle low there on Lynx Hawthorne at the end of the play, but short of the first down. 
So Baylor's going to punt. They thought about going for it, but Drew Galitz will come on and boot deep. And that play clock is moving. That's what Art Bryles is saying. Get up there and let's not waste another timeout. Got a penalty marker. Unless they uh, got the timeout. Offense. Oh. Five yard penalty, fourth down. This is a mess right now for Art Bryles. Well, it is a mess, but it's not also the place to take the timeout. They were not charged a timeout earlier. Art Bryles was trying to call one, and uh, they ended up stopping play from upstairs for a booth review, so he still has all three. Into the sun, and it hits Johnson. It's a free ball, but Texas recovers it at the 29 yard line. Jake Oliver right there to snare it after it hit Johnson. Looked like he couldn't see the ball in the sun. But Texas recovers, leading 17 0. College football brought to you by Dr. Pepper and college football. It's a one of a kind tradition. And Chick fil A, we didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Let's look at the Dr. Pepper Museum, which is here in Waco, the historic home of the nation's oldest soft drink, and also the home of one of the newest and best stadiums in college football. But the home crowd not happy right now as they trail 17 0. But a good play defensively on first down with Grant Campbell stopping the running back for no gain on the play. Chris Warren taken down. Swoops in at quarterback, second down and 10. And that one was behind Warren. That slowed him down. Warren gets to the 32 yard line, three yard gain. There's Chris Johnson, the Baylor quarterback who was injured earlier. He's coming from the locker room back onto the field. But doesn't have his helmet. Not moving well at all. Dave, you see third down here, number 32, Jonathan Gray in the ballgame, their best pass protector offensively for Texas. Third and seven. Swoops with time. Long throw. Overshot. Trying to hit DeJay Johnson. So it's fourth down. So Baylor's gotten stops now in consecutive possessions, but you just wonder about their offense. Now can they score? Corey Coleman back once again as a punt returner and for the second straight series the Bears should have really good field position for Lynx Hawthorne and you're right can they score can they manufacture any explosive plays Dave maybe Coleman on a punt return hadn't scored a touchdown in three games receiving and he did signal for the fair catch so it'll be Baylor ball at the 28 yard line down 17 zip. Take a look at the winning traditions driven by Goodyear. Well, the Baylor line is a long-standing tradition started in 1970 where freshman students run onto the field, help energize the game day crowd. They especially wanted to pack the field today for senior day. Corey Coleman, who's not a senior, ran onto the field as well, which would indicate he's going to declare for the NFL draft. They're 29 and 2 at home since 2011. Now this 266 million dollar facility McLean Stadium was built prior to last year and Baylor's 10 and 1 here with the low and loss coming against Oklahoma in their last home game. And they're down to their fourth quarterback so they're going to run Devin Chafin here and he gets positive yardage 4 to the 32. Let's check in with Laura. 
Kendall Bryles really challenging Corey Coleman, telling him if you get the opportunity to make a big play, we really need you to make it right now. And then looking at Lynx Hawthorne saying Corey's going to be your best option. Guys, I talked to Corey this week. He said he was frustrated being on his third quarterback. Now he's on his fourth. Got a penalty here, Laura. My question, Lou, is why don't you do more things? False start. Offense number one. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Two more things to get Corey Coleman the ball. I know they tried to throw it once to him on a screen pass. Right. But what else can you do to get him more involved in getting, uh, getting him to touch the ball? Well, first thing, I think they can move him into the quarterback. So get him into the slot or the number three receiver so he can be utilized on jet sweeps and a variety of other things to get the ball in his hands in space. And just as Laura's mentioning that they need to call upon him to step up, he gets a false start penalty offensively. There's Chafin. And he gets maybe a couple third and long coming up. Here's Adnan in the studio. Thank you very much, Dave. A Conference USA update. Southern Miss taking on Western Kentucky over on ESPN2. This is Brandon Dowdy, the pick six, and Kalen Reed will return it. 40 yards, 21-7 right now for Southern Miss. Once again, it's on the deuce. Dave? All right, pal, here it's 17-0 Texas. Baylor hasn't lost two straight since 2012. There's Link Hawthorne rolling out, throws into traffic, another interception. It's Jason Hall on the return inside the 30. Flags are down. Hall inside the 20. Hall knocked out of bounds near the 10, and there's a fight going on at the 30-yard line between Corey Coleman and P.J. Locke. Locke's helmet ripped off. There are three penalty flags down. Dave, I was watching that one from the very get-go. The moment the ball was intercepted, P.J. Locke, as he should do, turned and looked up the next Baylor man, and that man happened to be number one, Corey Coleman, and it turned into a tussle from word go. Corey Coleman losing his cool. I know he's frustrated with the fact he didn't cut a touchdown pass in the last three games, but you need to show some leadership now. Following the interception, holding, return team number 11. That'll be a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It'll be first down, Texas. That's interesting. They threw three penalty flags, and all they called was the hold. Maybe the officials missed it, but we clearly saw it while it was going on live. Really interesting call there, Dave. You're right. You see the turnover right here. Number 31, Jason Hall, who's had himself a wonderful game. You see the, the blocking as well from his teammates at Texas, and he finds the nearest sideline. And once again, without the penalty, you're in great shape offensively, Texas. You see just to the right of your screen here at the bottom. That's where they're starting to get after it right there. P.J. Locke, and keep in mind, the melee earlier on the sideline, Dave, he was involved in that as well, right. coming from the sideline between Baylor and Texas players off of the previous inter interception that Lynx Hawthorne had thrown for Baylor. And so Texas after another turnover. Two interceptions by Lynx Hawthorne has come in from his receiver spot, and now Texas just runs it between the tackles. Chris Warren, a true freshman, picks up nine. Warren's dad, Chris, played in the NFL for 11 years. Played mostly with the Seahawks. Then he moved to Dallas to play for the Cowboys. And here's Chris again. And forward progress appears to give him a first down to the 31. He's been out of the field checking with Laura. The Baylor athletic training staff says Chris Johnson will not return to this game. They will not tell what the injury is at this point, though. All right, so for, for Baylor, you, you got to find something else here. Links Hawthorne experiment not working. Defense trying to get a stop. And they'll knock down Warren for a loss. It's Taylor Young in the backfield making a play. Second and long. If Texas has to take advantage of these opportunities of field position, even if it results in just field goal attempts, makeable field goals, because with the state of the Baylor offense right now, three points is a lot of points for Texas. Swoops on second and 11. Fires to Newsom. And good play in the open field as Newsom is dropped by Chance Waz at the 30-yard line. So a two-yard pickup and Texas in third and long midway through the second quarter. You got to play for any type of points here if you're Texas. You have momentum, you have field position. Baylor really struggling with injuries at quarterback, ineffectiveness on offense. 
in this field position here for Texas. Tyrone Swoops has to make a play here for this offense. There's Jay Norvell, who was in his first year as the wide receivers coach, but now has to call plays. He's been doing that since week two. Here Swoops on third down and nine, going deep. Nobody home. Newsom down the sideline. Blanchard was running with him. It's fourth and nine. It would be about a 47-yard field goal from here, and Nick Rose certainly has the leg for it. And they're going to try it. Rose made a 23-yarder earlier this game. His long of the season is 46 yards. This is a 47-yard attempt. Check that officially now. They're saying 48-yard try. And Baylor had only 10 guys on the field. They run an extra player on the field late as there's a flag down. Kick was no good. Let's see what the penalty is Prior for. Prior to the snap, delay a game on the offense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Wow. That'll back him up, make it a 53-yard attempt. And Baylor had 10 players on the field. They ran an 11th out on late. And they were going to put him under the goalpost in case the, the kick was short. But now they're not doing that. It's a longer field goal. Why wouldn't you have somebody deep? I don't how, know how you can explain a delay a game on that play right there, Dave. Now they do send Orion Stewart back in case Rose is short on this attempt. From 53. And this is returnable. Here's Stewart. Will he take it out? He will. He's across the 10. And the kicker makes the tackle at the 30 yard line. Nick Rose. So it'll be Baylor ball. We'll see if Hawthorne is back in at quarterback. We return. Kick off your NFL Sunday with us an hour earlier than usual at 9 Eastern NFL Insider Sunday edition with week 13 injury news fantasy updates and more than a 10 Sunday NFL countdown. Wendy Nix Boomer and the rest of the game here at 17 nothing Texas remember Baylor still has a lot at stake the Bears with a win would finish in a three way tie based on Big 12 tiebreakers the conference would recommend them to the Sugar Bowl a New Year's six bowl game. But without a quarterback, and Lynx Hawthorne has already thrown two picks, moving in from receiver to play Q. You wonder, can they score? And they're going to blitz Hawthorne here. And he's on the outside and pushed out of bounds, lost yardage. Nashawn Hughes made the stop. The last scoreless first half for Baylor was 2010 in the Texas Bowl against Illinois. I don't think it has anything to do with those two guys. I think it's all about what's uh, happening on the field right now. Only 82 passing yards the last five quarters. A lot of that was the weather last week. And the injury to Johnson this week. Hawthorne's pass high. And then Coleman gets hit and flags come in. It was Holton Hill. And again, Coleman's been getting into it all game with the Texas DBs. It doesn't look like there'll be anything extra after this play. After the play was over, personal foul unnecessary roughness number five of the defense 15 yard penalty automatic first down let's see if this was a good call here yeah clearly the play's over yeah clearly and that was our impact matchup coming in Bolton Hill the true freshman on the perimeter versus Corey Coleman but you see 35 there Edwin Freeman he buzzes the flat underneath that throw so that Link Tawthorne can't throw the ball accurately he's got to throw it high good execution defensively for Texas Hawthorne Jr. comes in with 10 catches, but now having to play quarterback. That's what will help the cue. A run play. Jefferson into Texas territory as we check in with that man in the studio. All right, thank you very much, Dave. The inaugural American Athletic Conference Championship on ABC. The winner likely earns a New Year's Six berth. This is Greg Ward Jr., 47 yards as right now Houston all over Temple, 17 nothing. Back to you, Dave. Wow. Meanwhile, Johnny Jefferson trying to find a running lane. It's not there. Hughes slams into the ground of the 40 yard line. So if uh, Houston wins, they'll be in a New Year's Six game. A 
obviously that's on the line for Baylor. Meanwhile, Texas is trying to get to five and seven. Could the Longhorns get into a bowl game at five and seven? Off the to the outside, he's pushed out close to the first down. So third down coming up. There is some room for five and seven teams, but you have to have a high APR, an academic progress rate, and Texas is right now would not be high enough to get in. You see how far down they are. It's out of a thousand, and they're down the list at 958. On third and one, it's a first down run for Chafin. He stepped out at the 27, picked up seven yards. So again, the, the 80 teams needing to go to bowl games. There's going to be some five and seven teams that get in. Nebraska, the most likely. Kansas State, win or lose. And again, Texas way down there, 958. Kansas State taking on West Virginia today, who's hoping to get their eighth win of the season. Hawthorne. And just threw it away that time as he was getting pressure from Cottrell. You, know, you always have a contingency plan offensively for if your quarterback goes down. And then you hope that you don't have to go to your third quarterback. You don't have a plan for this, Dave. <laughs> I, I think that, that's the one thing going in knowing that Chris Johnson, uh, if he goes down, you're going to have to have a plan. But even if you've got something in place, the ability to execute it is so difficult. It all it takes is one score, a touchdown, and you're back in the game. Yep. The problem is, is the field condenses a lot less real estate for Texas to have to cover, which makes the passing game even more difficult. Got a snap it here. Play clock was at one. Here's Chafin finding a running lane inside the 20, and then he bowls over a defender close to a first down. And mark him just short at the 18. One of the few times Baylor's been in third and short, Dave. Really good job here by Chase. A good forward lean, breaking on tackles. He had 119 yards against TCU last week at career high, Devin Chafin. Several flags. See Kendall Browles there on the sideline. All starts. Offense number 55. Five yard penalty, third down. Second penalty on Fuller. And then, you know, you go from third and short as we're just talking about how critical that is for where this team is at offensively. Now you get a penalty and you put that man right there, Kendall Browles, in a position of trying to manufacture some semblance of a play to get you six or seven yards. For Baylor offense, Dave, they look at six or seven yards normally and say, oh, we can pitch that out right. to, the, to the flat and get that easy, no problem. Not so much the case today. And are you in four down territory here? Does that impact the play call? Apparently not. It's a screen and Chapin dropped it. Fourth down and six. It would be about a 42 yard field goal. They're going to try it. They, they feel they got to get some points here. So Chris Callahan, whose season long is 39, will come on to attempt what will be about a 41 or 42 yard attempt. He's only taken, attempted 10 kicks on the season. That's the fewest among Big 12 schools. This will be a 40 yard attempt. This one is no good wide to the left. The Bears remain scoreless. Let's keep an eye on the holder Cole Edmiston here to see if he didn't do a good job to get it down. Actually did a good job. Looked like it was a bad snap by Jimmy Landis the long snapper. Our alumni have been earning awards like the Nobel Prize, the Pulitzer, Olympic medals, and the Heisman Trophy. But there's no sense limiting yourself just yet. The University of Texas. What starts here changes the world. Well, Texas just ran a play of 27 yards on the ground for Chris Warren after the missed field goal by Baylor. So the Longhorns. Inching closer to midfield, leading 17-0 late in the first half. Swoop still in at quarterback, and that was a broken play. 
And Swoops pushed out, did get some yardage. Orion Stewart gets him out of bounds after a two yard run. And Swoops hobbling. He was shaken up earlier in the game. Gerard Hurd, normal starter, has played. He suffered a concussion last week, but they're going with Swoops. They're going to continue to go with Swoops, and he's hobbled. They need to continue to hand it to number 25, Chris Warren, the freshman tailback. He's the bell cow of this run game for Texas. Here's Warren again. And he drives the legs forward. A 225 pound splatters the pile and gets a first down. This kid had less than 100 yards all season until last week when he ran for 276, including a 91 yard touchdown run against Texas Tech. You know, you lose Deontay Foreman, you lose. Uh, Jonathan Gray and then you're left with true freshmen and Chris Warren and Kirk Johnson who's unavailable today but well that puts you in a real bind offensively particularly in ball security and pass protection from the 40 yard line of Baylor Warren again stood up by Blanchard a one yard pickup they pass Tom Luganville and Laura Rutledge here in Waco with a spot in the Sugar Bowl at stake for Baylor, but because of injuries, the Bears down to their fourth quarterback, and they are trailing Texas 17 nothing. A lot of speculation about what coaches will be brought back for Texas after this game is over. Charlie Strong has been under fire all year. Their biggest win, of course, was against Oklahoma. They thought they would take off after that, but they've lost two of three. But even if you're down to your fourth quarterback and you can say we beat Oklahoma and Baylor in the same season. Swoops throwing it out of the flat. And stumbling is Burt. He could not get back to the line of scrimmage. The overall design of that play right there, Dave, was outstanding. You've got two on two on the perimeter. Get the ball into the hands of your best playmaker, John Burt. You've got all the numbers defensively over to the play side off of the fake, and they can't execute it. This has been the single consistent issue with this offense they'll go in spurts of looking really good look like they've got semblance of order and then have plays just like that. Well there's been talk that Charlie Strong is going to have conversations tonight with some of his offensive coaches about their future speculation is that Jay Norvell and, and some of the other assistants will not be retained so we'll see as the swoop pass is incomplete but there's a flag down. The wide receivers coach and the tight ends coach from last year's squad were fired in, in Charlie Strong's first year after the season. Offside, defense number 92 lined up in the neutral zone, five yard penalty, replay third down. So then Charlie Strong went out and, and brought in Jay Norvell to help with recruiting. He was let go on, on the Oklahoma staff with a change over there on the offensive staff. Well, what does Texas need offensively? Well, they're still going to have three years remaining with Gerard Hurd. And Gerard Hurd is a spread guy. So philosophically, if you're going to try and build the offense about around his strengths, try to mask his weakness, you're going to have to commit to the spread offense wholeheartedly. Swoops in there on third down and four, and he's going to keep it. And he stood up at the line of scrimmage. Hit hard by Andrew Billings for no gain. Fourth down and four. I go back to the previous comment we made in relationship to capitalizing on this area of the field how many points three points actually is to Texas. We've watched Baylor. You get three here. Next thing you know it's three touchdowns and three extra points just for Baylor to be able to take the lead from what we've seen so far Dave. That's a tall order. Yeah. I just wonder if they have any first downs that Baylor can get. Approaching two minutes to go. It's a 53 yard attempt again he just missed from 53 and this one is good it's 20 to nothing Texas Nick Rose a 53 yarder boy is that huge Dave huge for this Texas football team. Let's go to the studio and check in with Adnan. 
All right, Dave, thank you very much. Coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report, a little American history for you. That's right, Temple and Houston vying for a likely New Year's Six birth. That game is over on ABC. We'll update that. Also, we're just hours away from the big day as we'll find out who's going to be in the college football playoff. Danny, Gal Danny Cannell, Joey Gallo giving their predictions. Plus, the coaching carousel, Syracuse lands their man. We'll evaluate all the moves so far. All that more coming up. Lexus Halftime Report, minutes away. Dave, back to you. All right, and then of the games today, the championship games today, which is the most intriguing to you, Tom? Honestly, I think the most intriguing one to me without question is Iowa-Michigan State because in order to beat Iowa, you have to play so clean and make fewer errors than they do because that's the one thing they don't do. They won't do something to screw the game. This goes through the end zone. It'll be a touchback. So Baylor still scoreless, two minutes to go. Lynx Hawthorne is the quarterback. The receiver moved to the position, and since he came in with the injury to Chris Johnson, they've run 18 plays. They have not completed a pass. They've had three pre-snap penalties, and he's thrown two picks. And right now, with those numbers, and when we, we all recognize and appreciate what Art Bryles and Kendall Bryles have brought to this program from an offensive identity standpoint, explosive plays, points in droves. So this is uncharted waters for Baylor. This, their coaching staff is coaching more right now than they probably ever have the entire season. Hawthorne, they're going to try to get it to Coleman's hands. He juggled it and breaks a tackle. I think he stepped out before he was gang tackled. Jason Hall was there for Texas, but they get about eight on the first play. Well, we reference those types of plays, finding ways to get the ball into the hands of their best player. Let him do the rest. Baylor facing its largest deficit of the season. Hawthorne throwing the other way to Cannon, and he's got the first down. So is this going to be their offense? Just Screen passes, get it out there quickly to receivers and then run between the tackles? Well, to this point, they've got no choice because the previous two attempts that were, were attempted downfield past 15 yards were both intercepted with no rhyme or reason for why the ball should have been thrown. First down of the 36. Now quarterback run here for Hawthorne. He gets smashed at the 38. Picked up a couple. Chris Nelson was there for Texas. Baylor has all of its timeouts. Hawthorne, good throw. Cannon with a first down grab. 105 on the clock. Ball at the 48 at Baylor. I like that play call because it's a single one-on-one -on -one read to the sideline with no danger of other coverage getting involved in the throw for an inexperienced passer. Very good job there by Kendall Byers, the offensive coordinator. Hawthorne dumps it off to Coleman. A short gain there. It's pushed out after a one-yard pickup by John Bonney. Clock stop of 59 seconds left in the half. Dave, I would continue to move the launch point like we've seen them do. Get Lynx Hawthorne out on the perimeter. Allow him to be a run pass threat. If he likes what he sees in the passing game, unload it. If not, become a runner. Hawthorne getting a check from the sideline. This is a whole other dynamic, right? Getting the offensive checks and getting out of a bad oh. play into a good play. Not easy. Hawthorne throws, and it's broken up. Anthony Wheeler in coverage on Davion Hall. And that's where the offense really becomes limiting because you don't want to overload Lynx Hawthorne. You don't want to get put too much on his plate. You've got to simplify, but that also takes you out of your normal realm of operation, which you've become so proficient at doing. They're going to run it on third down and nine to Chapin, and he's got the first down. The clock will stop as they reset the chains with 50 seconds left in the half. This is where you become very concerned with a quarterback situation like the one Baylor currently has, and that's clock management in the most critical time of the game. Hawthorne in trouble, and backing up, look out, and then he just throws it ahead incomplete. He was outside the pocket. That was an underhanded pass by Hawthorne. 35 seconds left. Well, it was clearly the smartest play, though, that Lynx Hawthorne has made the entire game when it comes to 
not taking risks with the football, doesn't like what he sees. Who cares how we got rid of it? He didn't take a sack and take him out of field position range as the clock winds down with 30 seconds, seven seconds, 35 seconds, excuse me, to go. That's Shiro Davis uh, shaking it for Texas. So 20 to nothing, Longhorns lead. Charlie Strong will come look at Shiro Davis. As uh, we look at our college football playoff rankings, uh, Clemson, North Carolina. These are brought to you by AT&T. That's on ABC tonight. On ESPN tonight, you got the Pac-12 championship, Stanford, USC. Notre Dame in the clubhouse at 10 and 2, probably headed to a New Year's Six, but not a playoff game. And of course, if North Carolina and Florida win, then there's complete chaos. You bring Ohio <laughs> State back into the picture, maybe Stanford with two losses, maybe Certainly. even Notre Dame with two losses jumps back into things if Stanford loses to SC. Well, you got to figure that both Stanford and Notre Dames are two teams that other programs look at as saying, well, they're playing really good football right now. They'd be a difficult team uh, to match up with. And so there's going to be some teams left out of this that have played their best football or peaking at the right time that aren't going to have an opportunity. And those ones that are have got to take advantage of it. There's Chris Callahan just missed a 40 yard field goal. They got some work to do before they get in his range. 35 seconds to go. They still have all their timeouts. Basically, Baylor in a position right now like a, a baseball team is in late, where all the pitchers have been used. And they got to put a, a first baseman in there to throw it. Here's Johnny Jefferson, and he's going to get wrapped up after a three yard game. Baylor will call a timeout. Brecken Hager on the stop, so 30 seconds remaining in the half, and it'll bring up third down. So, Tom, as you've been able to kind of diagnose this game, uh, is this all about the quarterback play and, and Lynx Hawthorne having to play? Is there something else you're seeing here with Baylor as to why they're struggling? Well, well it is to this point. It's taken them out of their normal realm of operation, as I referenced. You know, they're so, they're so um, used to being able to dictate tempo, pace of the game, throw the ball vertically. They've had very few vertical attempts. The ones they have had have resulted in turnovers. So that takes them out of their play calling mode. Kendall Bryles having to work around all of the different ailments that this offense has right now. So they're getting frustrated. You've seen some frustration on the sideline. Mm -hmm. We've seen some frustration erupt with Corey Coleman when things haven't gone the right way. Texas has got to take advantage of those things when they have the opportunities as they're going into the locker room right here. Much warmer up here in the booth, I'm, I'm guessing, for you this week? I don't even worry about temperature. I'm telling you, I'll talk about moisture, all right? Our pal Brian Greasy getting the, uh, the Big Ten Leadership Award for his humanitarian work, so he's not with us this week. Third down and seven, Hawthorne in trouble and gets away. Hawthorne on the run, floats it downfield, incomplete. 22 seconds remaining in the half. It'll bring up fourth and seven. Baylor will go for it. Derek Roberson and Hughes were back there for Texas. And Derek Roberson almost made a huge play. He's their designated pass rusher off the edge uh, for Texas, number 49. But you've got to credit the Texas defensive secondary because when a play breaks down like that and that quarterback breaks contain and the eyes start peeking in the backfield, that's when somebody comes loose downfield. Guys like Jason Hall, 31. Duke Thomas has had a remarkable game here in the first half. Credit the secondary for the Longhorns. Big first half performance. Play clock winding down. Did they not reset the play clock? No, they did. Baylor has to call another timeout. There was a penalty to flag, the foul though, too. For illegal substitution. Baylor calls its second timeout of the oh. half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. Man. A lot of turnovers again for Baylor, just like, like last week when they turned it over five times against TCU. Here was the first one that got the quarterback hurt. Chris Johnson fumbling it away. And then Lynx Hawthorne, a receiver playing quarterback, throws two picks. Yeah, this is really sandlock football, and it was evident on this first throw. This was really almost an instruction. Hey, find number one, throw it to him. And then you see late, don't ever throw back across your mi the middle of the field, late across your body. Jason Hall goes ahead and takes care of business in the secondary. Well, Baylor is going to go for a field goal here. It's going to be a 54-yard try, and they have Spencer Evans, the kickoff man, in to attempt it. Chris Callan doesn't have a leg. So Evans, who has 33 touchbacks, but does he have the accuracy? Can he keep it between those two sticks? Certainly has the leg. And 
was a liner. It would have taken somebody out if that thing went into the stands, and it almost did. And it sounded as it came off his foot, Dave, like it may have may have hit somebody. Well, I don't think it did. <laughs> he he mishit it. I think <laughs> we could hear it from up here. I can tell you that. I think it it somehow got between Texas players. That gap right there. Oh, just close. And so now Texas, with 17 seconds left, has the ball at the 38-yard line. They get a completion or two. They have a couple timeouts. They could be in position to get more points. But uh, looks like they're just going to take a knee and they're content to go into the locker room leading 20 to nothing. And based on how things have gone for Texas this year, I don't blame them. Absolutely not. All Texas. But a lot of that has to do with the quarterback injuries for Baylor. Stick around at halftime. Laura Rutledge will talk with Art Riles. The Longhorns trying to finish their season five and seven. Lead Baylor at halftime, 20 to nothing. Time now for the Lexus Halftime Report. Here's Ed Ann Burke. Yeah, man. And welcome to Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. A spot in the Sugar Bowl at stake for Baylor, a New Year's Six game, but the Bears being shut out at halftime, 20 to nothing and down to their fourth quarterback. As we welcome you back to ESPN College Football, presented by Cars.com. With Tom Luganville, Dave Pash, Laura Rutledge will rejoin us shortly. All right, so you heard Art Bryles tell Laura Rutledge that we're going to go with Lynx Hawthorne, a quarterback. He's a receiver as was Chris Johnson so how do you handle things now well they really have no choice a lot of programs struggle to put a fine player at the quarterback position on the field for the first or second quarterback with this injury to Chris Johnson now you're left to completely changing your entire offensive strategy of how you're going to move the football so Chris Johnson goes down he is woozy will not return you see he didn't have his helmet when he came back onto the stadium that's generally an indicator so here's where we really have the issue for Kendall Bryles the offensive coordinator how do you move the football through the air and your substitution gets affected because Lynx Hawthorne a receiver is now at quarterback. Baylor actually had more yards of total offense than Texas but three turnovers a lost fumble on that injury to Chris Johnson and then Hawthorne throwing two interceptions. Touchback Texas will start in the 25 here's Laura. Dave, as you guys mentioned, Chris Johnson out officially for this game with concussion-like symptoms. And over on the Texas side of things, Charlie Strong said he's pleased with the way they've taken advantage of Baylor's issues at quarterback, but he will never count out this Bears offense. He also said he plans to continue to play both Tyrone Swoops and Gerard Hurd at quarterback, but Swoops is still a little banged up with a thigh injury, so you might see more of Hurd in the second half. And Swoops will start the second half, uh, Laura, and, and, you know, again, Baylor, yes, I understand what Charlie's saying. You, you got to say the right thing, but with uh, Lynx Hawthorne a quarterback, you wonder if they can even get first downs. Right. There's no question about it, and that's what his offense needs to do right now: get off to a fast start after deferring in the first half. See the numbers for Swoops: passing touchdown and a rushing score in that first half. They're going to keep it on the ground with Warren, and he is out to the 29-yard line. It's a run of about four for Warren, who had 66 yards on the ground in that first half. Warren, a true freshman who's starting and running back because of injury to Jonathan Gray and Deontay Foreman. He's made the most of his opportunity. Set the Texas freshman record a week ago at 276 yards on the ground. They'll get it here on second down, and he's across the 30, and that's it. So third down coming up, Taylor Young on the stop. Now defensively, if you're Baylor, what's difficult to do is not let your motions start to boil to the surface because you're frustrated with the offense's inability to move the ball. Now you end up being on the field an awful lot. So when an offense is struggling, things aren't going your way, it can permeate the entire sideline, the entire football team. Well, if you get a takeaway, that would certainly fire up the sideline. Baylor's been very good at that this season in the top 20 in takeaways, but the last few games they haven't been able to create turnovers. And here's Swoops on the run, and he's got nowhere to go. Planted at the line of scrimmage. Fourth down, a three and out for Texas to start. Bill Bennett's defense coming up with a stop. Credit that defensive front and anchored by Andrew Billings, number 75, playing on Texas's side of the line of scrimmage. A really good job at the point of attack right there. And for, again, the best opportunity here is field position early for Baylor on offense. 
for Corey Coleman, who had only returned three punts on the season coming in because of Hawthorne having to play quarterback. They can't get him hurt. They got Coleman back returning punts. And the fair catch made at the 30 yard line. So Baylor down 20 to nothing on offense for the first time in the third when we come back. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com with Texas on top at Baylor 20 to nothing. Celebrating its 11th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. With Tom Luganville, Laura Rutledge, I'm Dave Pash in Waco. Brian Greasy at the Big Ten Championship but tonight to receive the Big Ten Leadership Award. Congrats to Greece for it's a major award <laughs> for all his uh, good <laughs> time uh, Christmas storyline for all his uh, humanitarian efforts <laughs> with uh, Judy's house in Denver. Congratulations Greece. See you in the postseason and Johnny Jefferson taking the direct snap on the first play this half for Baylor. He gets a first down to the 42 yard line. Well, you asked about the wrinkles. What can they do? These are the types of things that you do. You come up with different ways. Now, Johnny there, Jefferson's going to stay at quarterback in the Wildcat set. You see Hawthorne, he's at the bottom of your screen in the slot, number seven. He was the guy that was in there playing quarterback in the second quarter. Here's Jefferson again off the right side, and Jefferson gets clocked after a nine-yard run by P.J. Locke. It'll be second and one. Art Bryles maybe changed his mind. He said to Laura at halftime, it's going to be Lynx Hawthorne, but three straight plays of Johnny Jefferson. Looking for a running lane. He gets a block and picks up the first down. Boy, Jarrell Broxton, the right guard, absolutely unloaded <laughs> on a Texas D lineman to open up that hole. That might have been as much of a tackle as it was a block for Baylor up front. Yeah, the, the Texas sideline wanted a holding call. And now Devin Chafin is in getting the direct snap here. He's got Fierbacher at tight end blocking for him. And he's inside the 40 down to the 39 yard line. Paul Boyette on the stop, but they get another handful on the ground. It's like a clear message was sent to this offensive unit in the locker room. We're going to line up and we're going to go mano y mano and see if Texas can hold up at the point of attack. We're going to give them everything we got with different dimensions and different backs. It's Terrence Williams at running back. Williams was the one. Uh, taking the direct snap. He is a redshirt freshman who does have a rushing touchdown. Like Chafin, he, he's a big back. He's 215, 220 pounds. And here he goes, spinning out of a tackle, getting the first down of the 31 is Terrence Williams. Terrence Williams, a big, tall back, but does a nice job with his pad level, keeping low, spinning out of an arm tackle falling forward he's a lot like Chris Warren in terms of physical stature on the Texas side and the best drive of the game so far for Baylor Williams into uh, over the 25 yard line down about the 23 Nashawn Hughes on the tackle you know, Williams a guy that hasn't gotten a ton of carries this year just because there's so much depth at the running back position but Get the bulk of the work here on this possession as a quarterback. They've run six plays, all on direct snaps to a running back. Second and one. And Williams has a first down to the 20. Brought down by Brecken Hager, true freshman linebacker. If this is the approach that Baylor is going to take, the onus is going to go on the perimeter players, the Katie Cannons, their Corey Coleman's, and the Jay Lees to maintain their perimeter blocks because if they're not going to be involved in the passing game they can't just trot off the ball anymore. This is Baylor's offense. Lynx Hawthorne is in there now at quarterback so at least there's the threat of a pass. Don't know if we'll see one. Hope he's going to hand it off. Jefferson inside the 15 breaks a tackle. Touchdown Baylor. Finally, McLean Stadium comes alive as Baylor is back in the game. Johnny Jefferson with his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. Eight 
play 69 yard scoring drive all run plays. 20 to 7 Texas. What a statement for Baylor after Texas receives the ball. They come right back consecutive run plays. It's all Baylor Bears on the ground. Texas better come with an answer if they want to keep the lead over the Bears. ESPN College Football brought to you by Ford Service. When your Ford needs service, you need the specialists at Ford. And cook zero. All taste zero calories. Try a new game day tradition. See how the pressure's gonna be on. Well, technically, uh, Baylor has now used six different quarterbacks this year because they went direct snap to Johnny Jefferson and Terrence Williams that entire scoring drive. Each carried it four times. Jefferson gets the touchdown, and Baylor is finally on the board. Chris Johnson made a second straight start. He was knocked out of the game because of a concussion. Lynx Hawthorne came in through two picks. He's a receiver, basically. We'll see if we see more of him. Here's Newsom on the return. Over the 20-yard line. And knocked out of bounds at the 24. Let's take a look at today's AT&T strong performance. And this is Jefferson and Williams sharing carries on that touchdown drive that featured all run plays on direct snaps, with the exception of the touchdown. That's a load to handle the point of attack, David. And when you look at Texas defensively and you know what they're going to do and you're helpless to stop it, you better come up with some answers next time around. Jefferson from 20 yards out. It's Baylor back in it, and a trick play here, a pitch to Johnson on the end around. He's across the 35-yard line to pick up the first down. Well, you thought they'd have to come back with something. That was a nice job there. Well, that's what these offenses morphed into, as you see Terrence Williams with the big drive for Baylor on the previous drive. Is Now the jet sweep is that toss forward, so if something bad happens in the backfield, it's an incomplete pass. Good first down addition there for Texas. Tyrone Swoop started the game. He's starting the second half, and he's going to throw it here on first down. In the traffic, it's caught in Baylor territory by Johnson. With Chance Waz in coverage, and it's a pickup of 17. Jay Johnson just goes up and gets it. Cradle catches it right in front of Chance Waz, and the flat underneath defender there, number 48, Trevon Blanchard, not unable to make the play. Chris Warren stood up by Jamal Palmer. A good player on that Baylor defensive line. Oakman and Billings get uh, all the credit, but Palmer, a guy that missed most of last year with an knee injury, he's had a terrific season for the Bears. A senior playing his final home game. Swoops rolling to his right. Incomplete. Diving attempt by Beck, but he'd have to dive pretty far to catch that ball. Third long. When you're going to make those naked type actions in the backfield, you've got to snap your head around and sprint to the mark if you're Tyrone Swoops so you can account for that free rusher off the edge. And it didn't allow for an accurate throw for Swoops to get his shoulder squared at the line of scrimmage. Oakland looking to tee off and get after the quarterback here in third and nine. Play clock at one. Swoops steps up and runs. And bounces forward. He'll be short of the first down of the 42. It'll be fourth down and three. Will Texas go for it? Meanwhile, Taylor Young shaken up for Baylor. Oakland also slow to get up. If you're the Texas Longhorns, you punt this thing. You do everything in your power to get that ball inside the 10-yard line and put an offense on the field that has a quarterback who's a receiver or a tailback taking a direct snap and cannot throw the football. Back them up. 
True freshman Michael Dixon, his first year of playing American football. He's from Sydney, played Australian Roos football his entire life until this year. Corey Coleman is deep. Again, Lynx Hawthorne, normally the punt returner, but because of his move to quarterback, they got Coleman as the deep man. And that is a terrific punt. Now, checked up. It'll end up outside the 10, but that's exactly what Charlie Strong had in mind. And so Baylor backed up, but back in the game. Tonight on ABC, it's the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship. Number one, Clemson, and 10th ranked North Carolina. Who wins, Tom? I think Clemson wins because of the mindset of going in against an opponent they respect, one of the most improved teams in all college football. You know, we talk about the Royals are worried for the top assistant coach. How about Gene Chizik at North Carolina? That was one of the most abysmal defenses in all of college football the last couple of years. Baylor with its worst starting field position. Lynx Hawthorne will take the snap and throw it. Here's Coleman out in space. Stays in bounds and knocked out after a gain of about six to the 17-yard line. Coleman, a Bolitnikoff Award finalist. They're trying to get it in his hands. That's the first pass play this half. That touchdown drive, all run plays. Look what that does for you too, Dave, though. Second down, now you're in a great play calling situation. So that first drive saved the, the touchdown run. It was all direct snaps to either Jefferson or Williams that have gone back now to Hawthorne at the quarterback spot. Filling in for the injured, Chris Johnson, Stidham, and Russell. Fourth string quarterback. Run play as Jefferson gets the first down to the 24, seven more yards. Well, and the play selection is essentially the same. It's just different as to who's handing the ball off. Jefferson still carrying the ball. Execution up front is the same. And now you're seeing a little bit more tempo with Hawthorne. Eight minute mark of the third quarter. And again, so much at stake still for Baylor. They don't have a lot of 10 win seasons around here. And I know lately, back to back, but prior to 2011, they only had one. That was back in 1980. A spot of the Sugar Bowl on the line as well. Coleman dragged down after the catch at the 30. Another gain of five or six for Coleman. Tackled by Holden Hill. When Holden Hill keeps giving that cushion to Corey Coleman, but if, if I'm Texas on defense, I'm going to get inside Jake for Holden Hill, and I'm going to force Corey Coleman to the sideline and see if Lynx Hawthorne can throw the vertical ball downfield. Now they got the direct snap set up here with Hawthorne split wide. It's Johnny Jefferson running, and Jefferson powers past the marker to move the chains. Baylor's offensive line starting to lean on Texas right now. Have a lot of success on the ground here in the second half. I like the approach from Kendall Browse, the offensive coordinator. This is who they are right now, so they've got to come up with a plan that accentuates the strengths of all of these backs and everybody touching the football in the backfield, and they've done it to open up the third quarter here. 245 yards, 82 of those coming here in the third quarter as Hawthorne throws complete to Jay Lee at the 41. He's pushed out by Davis. They're getting five yards a pop on first down. That hitch route, again, it's an easy confidence throw, no underneath coverage, one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what you want to give a quarterback with not a lot of experience in the passing game. Jefferson is back in now, quarterback, to take the direct snap. Here comes a run. Picks a hole. Near the first down, it'll come up just short. It'll bring up third down. If Baylor somehow comes back and wins this game, look, I know that we've given Art Biles an incredible amount of credit for what he's done with this program. Taking Baylor to this point where they're competing for Big 12 titles and the college football playoff, but if they can somehow get a win trailing 20 to nothing, I mean, we were talking about this during halftime with the guys in the truck, how, you know, some teams, you get to your second quarterback and you have no shot. Right. Yet Baylor's down to its fourth quarterback and they're still in the game. I know it's against a team that has seven losses, but Texas did beat Oklahoma this year. Nashawn Hughes shaking up for Texas. So we got an official timeout. No matter why you're on the road, travelers all want the same thing. Great service, a clean, comfortable room, and a price that saves you more for what you travel for. And that's how we've always done things in Motel 6. Now we're renovating our locations nationwide with a fresh, modern look, still for the lowest price of any national chain. So you'll see us in a whole new light. I guess the more things change, a great deal stays the same. I'm Tom Bodette from Motel 6, and we'll leave the light on for you. 
the players, cheerleaders, early seat claimers, the road trippers, masked riders, passionate tailgaters, the wideouts, blackouts, fans going all out, the hooting and hollering, foot stomping, halftime bands rocking. Every team has a tradition that inspires superior performance. And for the last 60 years, we're proud to be the one they all have in common. They passed Tom Luganville along with Laura Rutledge here in Waco. It's 20 to 7, Texas. The Longhorns trying to avoid their first eight loss season since 1956. One of the reasons they're leading, Chris Johnson, who started today at quarterback, is out. Suffered an injury, a head injury in the first half. So Lynx Hawthorne is in a quarterback, although they've been rotating and putting running backs back there as well to take direct snap. Third down and two. If Baylor wins, they would tie for second in the Big 12 and likely a Sugar Bowl bid. They run Terrence Williams and He's close to the first down. Anthony Wheeler on the stop. We'll see where they spot it. I believe the second effort here from Williams is he extends this ball. And he may have had it on first effort. You're going to see that ball extend over. He's clearly got the yard yeah. to gain for the first down. Possible Baylor could get Jarrett Stidham back at quarterback for their bowl game. They have not been to a Sugar Bowl since 1957. They beat Tennessee. Hawthorne rolling out, looking to throw, and throws it away. That was a smart play by Hawthorne with Jason Hall chasing. Here in Waco at beautiful McLean Stadium on a great day. Temperature in the mid 50s. Laura Rutledge down on the field. Tom Lugan, Bill in the booth. I'm Dave Pash. As mentioned, a spot. A New Year's Six game at stake for Baylor playing without Seth Russell, Jarrett Stidham, and now Chris Johnson at quarterback. Texas only one score in the last seven drives after getting off to a great start. They did have three takeaways and had good field position because of those turnovers, which certainly helped. And now Terrence Williams is in to take the direct snap here at quarterback. Running the Wildcat on second and ten. And he's across midfield into Texas territory. Forward progress to the 46. Eight yards, third and short coming up at Gus Penning. They keep running the tight end there through the hole to set up the rush lane. So if you've got another def Texas defender down, and that appears to be Jason Hall. Well, Texas has had injury problems all year. With more on that, here's Laura. They're losing some firepower down here, guys. Duke Thomas, Texas cornerback, went into the locker room for cramping, and then Nashawn Hughes dealing with a right knee injury. I'll continue to update uh, with more information as I get it. Well, with Duke Thomas and Jason Hall, that's two of their biggest playmakers that have really come to play today. And you see, ooh, this collision right there in the back end was dangerous. Some friendly fire coming in, and Jason Hall taking the brunt of it. Yeah, the Sean Elliott came in and there hit his teammate. Didn't mean to, obviously. Peter Jenkins, who might be their best player on defense, he, he's out with a knee injury. Malik Jefferson out with an ankle. Hassan Ridgeway out with an ankle. He was a game time decision today. They have injuries on offense as well for Texas. They lead 20 to 7, five minutes to go. Third and two. Jefferson spun down, close to the first down marker. Shiro Davis, who's back in after being injured earlier in the game. Looks like it's going to be fourth down. Measure. Gonna, they are going to measure this. And you take a look at the numbers game for Baylor. See here if Jefferson rolls on and may have rolled at or onto the marker. We're going to see here, of course, that yellow line to gain isn't always accurate there on your TV screen but they can upstairs stop things and you know, every guys reviewed so they can review this further because I, I it did look like he landed on Shiro Davis and then when he lunged forward the problem was it was hard to see the ball they didn't know exactly where the ball was when he went to the ground uh, is this a, a must go situation here for Baylor fourth down and inches 
Well, is this clock, is it just under five minutes here in the in the third quarter? It wouldn't surprise me. I, I think it's it plays into the mindset and the thought process of Kendall Browns. That's his approach. That's his father's approach. So it looks like we're going to get that right here. I, I don't think you have any other choice. No. I, I think you got to go for it. Jefferson is in as the quarterback here to take the direct snap on fourth down. Waits, finds the hole, has a first down inside the 40-yard line. Good patience by Johnny Jefferson to get the first down and more. And he allowed the defensive front seven to converge on the interior because they're expecting that inside run and great vision and patience by Jefferson to cut back against the grain. Now they go back to Lynx Hawthorne. They keep Jefferson in the backfield with them, and Gearbacher as well the block, but Hawthorne's going to throw, and Coleman goes up high to pull it in. And Coleman knocked down at the 23-yard line. He gets the first down. Let's see Corey Coleman as he's matched up. Slight little push off there. He certainly gave the impression, though, Day, that he was going to go vertical on number five, Holton Hill, and he gets his momentum off of him. No call there. Well, he, he, he's a fiery guy. We've seen him after the whistle as well. He'll get the handoff here, Coleman. And he's stopped at the 21. Likely uh, the final home game, Coleman, who's a junior, ran out there with the seniors. And he'll be making uh, an announcement after the game that he'll be going to the NFL. He's a Belinikoff finalist along with Laquan Treadwell and Josh Dotson. Leads the FBS in touchdown catches, but none in the last three games. You have to wonder if that frustration has boiled over today and some of the things we've seen him do. But at least they're getting him touches here in the second half. They've thrown it to him on wide receiver screens. And again, look at that cushion at the bottom of your screen they're giving him. Here's Hawthorne running right. Long way to go. Turns up field. Is close to the first down before he steps out. He'll be just short. Run out by Davis, third and one. This is why those perimeter blocks are so critical for Baylor right now, because with the box being loaded, seven defenders plus a single high safety walk down, it ends up being eight. Now it's just the perimeter folk with the ball carry. Nashawn Hughes lined up offside. And it's a first down. Penalty markers are down. Nashawn Hughes lined up as if he actually thought <laughs> that Baylor was going the other way. Did you see how he was lined up there? I don't know if he was sure whether he was supposed to be in the game or not. It was probably the latter, but it did look at first like he was lining up to rush the passer. So you're going to see him right Offside. here. Defense number 35. So he's right now he's the H back for Baylor. Well, the referee just said number 35. I'm not sure who he's referring to there. It's clearly number 40. He might be getting told that right now. But it is a first down for Baylor. First and goal on the nine. Trying to get within one score with three minutes to go here in the third. He felt if he stood really still, nobody would see him. <laughs> and this is where it gets interesting when you're checking and you've got this guy in there playing quarterback that used to be being a receiver. Play clock winding down. And Williams, nowhere to go. We haven't seen Shock Linwood at all in the second half. Wonder if he might be injured because he was banged up last week. They weren't sure whether he'd be 100% for this game. He's been dinged for a couple of weeks, uh, certainly, Dave. And again, look at the field here. The field's condensed. That's an advantage, particularly versus the passing game here, which we haven't seen from Baylor for Texas makes you really be able to focus on the run game. 16th play of the drive coming up. This possession started around the Baylor 10. Hawthorne will keep. He's inside the 10 and gets picked up and body slammed the six yard line by John Bonney. It'll be third and goal from there. It's a really good open field tackle in space by John Bonney and we've seen that from the secondary for Texas all day long. Nothing Lynx Hawthorne could do to make the defender miss. And here we sit with third down. See if Vance Bedford fouls up a blitz here. Eight in the box for third and goal.
Baylor just three of 11 on third down. I'll hand it off, and Williams has nowhere to go. Grabbed at the point of attack by Paul Boyette. All right, your fourth and goal on the six. You you gonna just take points here, Luke? I would generally say no. The problem is the only way to get them from this vantage point is to throw the football. And how do they do that? And all the passes You're gonna have have to a get... yard downfield. Correct. You're, you're gonna throw it six yards downfield here, which is a tall order right now for this Baylor offense. Callahan is 0 for 2 today. This will be a 24-yard attempt. That gets Baylor within 10 points. Still a ton of time left here in Waco. And the defense for the Bears have been much better. So late third quarter, Baylor seeking its 10th win. And the offense has come alive here in the second half with these direct snaps to the running backs. Very clear that Baylor had a plan, and it was to run the football effectively, outnumber Texas in the box by having the direct snap, be the ball carry, and the handoff to Jefferson here to get the touchdown. Now, the area of concern, Dave, if you're Baylor going forward, is this last drive that resulted in a field goal took a lot of time off the clock. If you can't throw the football, the clock is not your friend right now. Although part of the reason it took so long is because the drive started at their 11, yeah. and they can't throw on downfield. But even though they scored, because Texas was able to pin them back, force them to go the entire distance, the clock still plays in Texas' favor. That offensive line for Baylor, led by Spencer Durango, four-year starter playing his final home game. He's an Outland Trophy finalist, an academic All-American, a finance major, will be a high draft pick. Turnable for DeJay Johnson. He stumbles, but has a lot of running room. He's across the 35. Johnson in the Baylor territory. No flags down. Texas will start on Baylor's side of the field. All right, let's uh, test Luke's. Greece has not been good at this all year, so can you do any better? The Aflac trivia question. The last five Heisman Trophy winners from the Big 12 have been quarterbacks. So who is the last non-quarterback winner from the Big 12? Oh. Did you sneak a look at the, the answer no, in the car? No, but I'm going to, I mean, it's got to have something tied to do with one of these two teams. So I'm going to rack Very my good. little brain on this one. <laughs> It's a good guess, by the way, that it would have to do with one of these two teams as we're calling this game. <laughs> as Chris Warren has grabbed. Doesn't matter. He said one. Big 12. It could be somebody else yeah. for the Big 12. A one-yard pickup. We're going to have to keep you in suspense, I think, Tom, and wait till the fourth quarter. I think I have it, though. Greasy just texted in the answer from uh, the Big Ten Championship where he's getting his leadership award. <laughs> he thought he would lead the way and pick the winner. <laughs> All right, so that's the end of three here in Waco. Can Texas hang on and get its fifth win? They lead by 10. All right, let's answer today's athletic trivia question. The last five Heisman Trophy winners from the Big 12 are quarterbacks. The last non-quarterback winner from the Big 12, Ricky Williams in 1998. You didn't give me a chance. I told you I had it. Here, Swoops in trouble. Gets away from one defender, his pass knocked down. Incomplete, Avion Edwards with the pass breakup. So it's third down and nine. Now if you're Baylor on defense, you have Texas right where you want him, third and long versus a quarterback that has not been very effective in the passing game outside of his first quarter touchdown. This is a huge defensive series after that big return by DeJay Johnson, giving Texas his field position. The Longhorns just one of nine on third down. Jonathan Gray is in the backfield with swoops. Will Baylor bring pressure here? They rush only three. They're going to force swoops to beat him with a throw, and he does, although that's because the guy was wide open. John Burt, he's short of the first down, though. Will Texas go for it? Davey's wide open with nobody around him, and 
he forces the receiver, Tyrone Swoops that is, to go to the ground to catch this football. And that right there epitomizes Texas on offense the entire season. Better throw it to first down, right? <laughs> yeah. Just give him a chance to catch it. He might run for another five to seven yards. Do you agree with this decision? Go for it. You got a 10-point lead. Baylor's I, got Lynx Hawthorne quarterback. Actually, I, do, I do agree with this decision. If they go with the right package, and that is make sure the quarterback's running the football here. And we're going to have a timeout called by Texas. Charlie Strong wants to think about this a little Texas. bit longer. That's our first charge timeout of the half. Let's go to Adnan Burke in the studio. Thank you very much, Dave. We'll update you on the Conference USA match between Southern Miss and Western Kentucky. It's over on ESPN2. This is Brandon Dowdy here to Taiwan Taylor. The Hilltoppers right now leading this one 31 to 28. Can you get any more wide open in the end zone? Also, just a reminder, Gonzaga and Arizona's come up next. Hey, let me take a selfie, especially when it's Jay Billis in the house. Just under 30 minutes away, a little college basketball action. Dave, I know you appreciate the hoops as well. Back to you, sir. I still got a month to go before uh, with Bill Walton. Let me just enjoy the next four weeks, uh, Adnan. <laughs> Back here in, in Waco, where Baylor is trailing Texas 20 to 10. So, you know, so you could argue, hey, should Texas blow that time out there? But obviously, this is a big decision. And it looks like they're still going to go for it because Jay Norvell is talking to uh, Tyron Swoops. But I don't know, Luke, so you, you got a 10 point lead. I mean, make Baylor go the length of the field. Why, if you don't give it, give them the ball at the 40 yard line with Lynx Hawthorne? At quarterback or just these direct snaps to running back true and 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 if you're if you are texas right here and you're going to commit to going for this go with the package that outnumbers the defense so if they're going to line up and hand the ball off they're going to be at a disadvantage because right now baylor has been physical with them at the point of attack in the run game but when it's a direct snap to tyrone swoops and you don't have a man defensively to account for the quarterback running the football, now you have the advantage. So it's either going to be quarterback run or some type of action pass uh, with a with a backfield play action. Here's Swoops, and he's able to power close to the marker. Boy, the spot though looks short. They must have ruled that when his knee went down, the ball was short of the marker. It's Baylor ball. Texas doesn't get it. And again, I think that was a poor decision by Charlie Strong to risk it there. Wow. Oh, yeah, he definitely that's a should. good spot, and that's a good call by the officiating crew and the line judge and the headlinesman coming in. You see the leg down and the elbow down right there. Prior to the 38-yard line, Art Briles has got to be pleased with his defense. Baylor knew what was coming, and they executed it. But again, that last drive for Baylor took six or seven minutes. They had to go the length of the field and settle for a field goal. Why not just punt it? Why, why bother trying to go for it there? This may well take that long too just from your own 39 you're, you're in a situation where you, you can't throw the ball down the field at all every time they've tried the ball's been intercepted because they've got links off throwing a quarterback as a wide receiver or Johnny Jefferson is in there right now just to take the direct snap and run the ball Jefferson finds a crease at the 45 in the Texas territory spun down to the 48 by Devontae Davis a 12 yard run you know, Texas knows what's coming. They've got seven men in the box, plus a single high safety walking down late with no regard for the passing game whatsoever and have not been able to stop the run here in the third quarter in the early going of the fourth. Jefferson inside the 40. Close to the 37. Now, Tom, you're, you're Texas. You know this is coming when you see right. those running backs in the backfield. How do you counter defensively? Well, right now they've going to bring. They're going to have to bring that safety out of the middle of the field, and they're going to bring him down into the box. And right now it's number 24, Terrence Singleton. See how high he set back in his single high set. I'd walk him down right now and force Baylor to have to make a throw one on one versus coverage. And I went to Syracuse. I'm not a math wizard, but seven is better than six, and that's what Baylor has against six in the box for Texas. And here the Bears pound it again. They had numbers. And it's a six-yard run 
inside the 35. You know, now what's starting to happen is those defenders that are lined up over the slots right now for Baylor's receivers are starting to peek in the backfield, and when they see run, they're immediately inserting. So what comes off of that? The pop pass to the slot down the seam if they're so inclined and the opportunity presents itself. Presents itself. Now they bring an extra man in the box. And this is interesting. So you got Terrence Williams. They're checking now to the sideline. Anyway, they let him throw the ball here on second and four. If you do, it's going to have to go to the top of the screen where you see the defender right there for Texas walking up. They brought him, but they ran it anyway. And Williams has a first down to the 27. Anthony Wheeler there with Jackson on the tackle, but it's a fresh set of downs for Baylor, down 10 early in the fourth. Yeah, they end up running the football away from pressure. There's Vance Bedford, the defensive coordinator, trying to hang on right now on defense. We're told Bryce Cottrell has uh, been injured as well, has gone to the Texas locker room. That's another defender down for the Longhorns. Williams inside the 25. And Timothy Cole gets a hold of him at the 22 yard line. Five more yards on the ground. Right now, Baylor's formations are a huge advantage for Texas because they're splitting two receivers out to each side so wide out by the numbers that you eliminate four defenders before the ball's even snapped. It's all about in the box play and whether or not that seventh or eighth defender can make the play against the run for Baylor. So they're rotating Williams and Jefferson. We're told it shock Linwood's ankle is bothering him. He's not expected back for Baylor. Jefferson inside the 20. Down to the 13. Another first down for Baylor. And that's what we're talking about right there. Watch the second level. You get him one on one. Jefferson with number 24 there for the defensive secondary for Texas. And what are you going to do? He's either going to make a miss, you're going to have to make a tackle in the open field. He'll hand it off, though, to Jefferson. And again, hard to run against that eight-man front now. He gets a couple to the 10. Second down and eight coming up for Baylor. As you pointed out earlier, those direct snaps a lot harder to do when you get down here. Right. And Texas can stack the box. You don't have to worry about that safety too far deep. Right? Correct. And now you do have that extra defender readily accessible right there at the line of scrimmage to account for the quarterback running the football. See Terrence Singleton, 24 there, walking up into the box. Jefferson slips a tackle, and he gets down to about the eight. He'll pick up just a couple more. It'll bring up third down. And again, Baylor's in a situation here where they can, they can get three. They don't have to score the touchdown here. They just want to get some points. So we'll see what they call on third down. They need to do it quickly here, though, because the clock's continuing to run down. We're going to be under 10 minutes here in just a moment. And three points if the clock runs isn't positive. Baylor trailed 20 to nothing, lost its quarterback Chris Johnson, who was their third string quarterback, to injury in the first half. So Lynch Hawthorne is in there now, and he'll take off on third down. Looking for the end zone, and he dies for it. They haven't signaled yet. Now they do touchdown. It's a Baylor touchdown as Hawthorne got in. Take a look at Hawthorne here. What a great play to sneak that ball inside the pylon. His entire body is elevated. Just look at that. Oh my goodness. What a tremendous effort on behalf of Hawthorne. And Dave, to your point, the decision to go for it on fourth down, if you're Texas on that previous offensive drive, may cost them here in the fourth quarter. Callahan puts it through. It's a three-point game. 17 unanswered points for Baylor. 17 unanswered points without an attempted pass past five yards down the field for this Baylor offense that's had to do it with a workmanlike blue-collar attitude. Toughness at the point of attack. 17 unanswered points. Down by three.
Help us beat cancer. Go to www.jimmyv.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Beautiful day in Waco. It was 20 to nothing Texas, but Baylor has roared back to cut within three despite being down to its fourth quarterback and then two other guys that are getting the direct snaps. See if they kick it away from DeJay Johnson. His last return was fantastic. They do. It'll be Newsom for the Longhorns. And he will not even make it to the 20-yard line. That was well covered by Baylor. Lee Bristow was down there checking with Laura before Baylor's most recent touchdown defensive coordinator Phil Bennett looked into his little crystal ball and he said hey we're gonna score right here guys and then we're gonna win the game he looked at his defense fired them up they're all fired up on this Baylor sideline and it's night and day different from what it was when they were scoreless earlier in this game the sideline electric on the Baylor side and so is the crowd Laura there's the quarterbacks. You got Jared Stidham, who's out with the ankle injury. Seth Russell with the neck injury. Chris Johnson with a head injury. And Swoops is in the game at quarterback for Texas. He throws complete to John Burt. And they'll give him forward progress uh, to about the 26-yard line. Important throw there for Tyrone Swoops to get to a manageable second down and then third down situation backed up for the first time poor field position for the Texas offense to start the drive. It is interesting that since we're, we're told that Gerard Hurts OK that they're still going with swoops even though the offense has stalled here the last quarter and a half. They run it on second and three. There's nowhere to go for Chris Warren. There's Jamal Palmer again. Avion Edwards in there as well. So we got a third down coming up here for Texas. We've talked about Texas defensively. Can they were they able to deal with the fact that Baylor can't throw the football to move the ball? Well, it didn't matter. Well, Texas hasn't been able to throw the football very well either, Dave, and Baylor knows it. Swoops 10 of 17 throwing the football. Only four completions in the second half for Texas. The Longhorns trying to avoid an eighth loss. That has not happened in Austin since 1956. Swoops will throw it, and it's caught by Beck for a first down. Fake the run, dropped back, and dumped it off, and they moved the chains. This was the play call they should have gone with when they tried to convert on fourth down. You fake the quarterback power, you drop off Andrew Beck into the flat. Very well designed and well executed. He could have taken his pick. There were two guys out there. Dorian Leonard was there as well for swoops. There's Warren off the right edge and able to get rid of a defender. Fall forward to get the first down at 232 pounds. True freshman, Rockwall, Texas, grew up. Was born anyway in Seattle when his dad was playing for the Seahawks. His dad then went to the Cowboys. Chris moved to Dallas. And it was interesting when he was being recruited. There was talk of Charlie Strong being let go, and his parents came out and said, if Charlie Strong is not back, then we're probably going somewhere else. It'll be a lot of Warren here on this drive. He's into Baylor territory. It takes five guys to get him down at the 47-yard line, a five-yard run. Situational awareness right now for Chris Warren is critical. And what I mean by that is understanding that you are controlling the line of scrimmage in the run game. The ball is in your hands. You've got to stay in bounds. The clock is winding down. And most importantly, ball security. Seven minutes to go on the fourth. Texas hanging on to a three-point lead. It's worn again straight ahead. Will be short of the first down. Stopped at the 44 by Taylor Young. Uh, this might set the modern day Big 12 record for running plays between the tackles. Between these two. They're so used to throwing it all over the place, but because there's no quarterbacks in this game, they're just running it ahead, straight or, ahead. Or few as passes attempted past five yards for both teams. Right. When is the last pass downfield by either team in, in this game? My memory doesn't go back that far, Dave. Third and two. 
swoops again drops back to throw and he's got Beck again for a first down inside the 40 at the 38 yard line. Thank goodness for the execution of this offense on this drive because that play in the previous conversion is the play once again they should have called on fourth down when they didn't convert. This was off into the flat. This is an offshoot of their 18 wheeler package where you've got 47 42 and 36 in the backfield along with Tyrone Swoops predominantly run formation they throw it well on this drive you saw that look at uh, Gene Orbell as the play caller somebody dials up here for Swoops on first down inside the 40 yard line they're going to keep it in his hands and Swoops is free breaking a tackle and getting a first down to the 26 yard line a 12 yard run for Tyrone Swoops. This is reminiscent of exactly what Texas did when they started to take control of the game versus Oklahoma. They got into this offensive set. Everybody in the stadium knew what they were going to do, and they did it anyway. And now Tyrone Swoops has got to take control of this game, make smart decisions with the football. We have a stoppage of play for an injury with Bo Blackshear shaken up for Baylor. They just got him back from injury. And again, Baylor playing for a spot in the Sugar Bowl. If they're in a three-way tie, there's a lot of tiebreaker scenarios, but Baylor would actually win based on the Big 12 tiebreakers the second spot. And go to the Sugar Bowl, but Oklahoma assuming it goes to the college football playoff. Swoops to the 25, a short game, but that clock is moving. We're going to be inside five minutes on the next snap. For all of the criticism, Dave, of this Texas offense, Credit does need to go to Jay Norvell, the play caller. When he became in charge of this offense, he did two things. He simplified and he created an identity. And that identity is we're going to find a way to run the football and mask our weaknesses. And he has done that. Norvell took over for Sean Watson, who's still on the staff coaching quarterbacks, but expected that Watson, perhaps Norvell, and, and some others would be relieved of their duties after this game. Good play as Warren is cut down. Taylor Young was back there for the Bears. And so he didn't get anything on that play. It'll bring a third down and long. And a timeout called here by Baylor. That will leave the Bears with two. 4.35 to go in the fourth. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. All drive, no drama. And in part by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. At the Heisman House, Robert Griffin III, the only Baylor Heisman Trophy winner. You saw Mike Singletary, Baylor great in there with Neil Everett. Nissan Heisman House will be at the college football playoff. Meanwhile, Texas with its longest drive of the game, just over five minutes, they can be converted twice on third down on this drive. They have only one third down conversion all game. Swoops in the shotgun, and he pitches it. Warren gets outside, and did he get the first down? No, he stepped out. He stepped out at the 19, three yards short, bringing up fourth down. Good call. Yep. Definitely out. So Texas will try a field goal. Nick, Nick Rose has been good from 23. And how about that 53 yarder? How important that make was by Rose earlier in the game? Well, absolutely huge. We talked about just how important, just three points, how big that was at that time. And it's looming large right now. 37 yard try. And it's good. So Texas leads by six, but it's possible that Baylor could win the game on its next possession. 3.59 on the clock. And the Longhorns trying to finish the season five and seven. Extend their lead to six.
Tonight on ESPN, it's the Pac-12 championship game presented by Dr. Pepper. Stanford, which has moved up to number seven in the latest college football playoff rankings, taking on 20th-ranked USC. The Cardinal already beat the Trojans once this year. And if there's some chaos that happens in the top five, then who knows, Stanford could still get in. College Football Playoff Selection Committee about uh, an hour and a half away in Grapevine, Texas, watching all the games today. 12 o'clock tomorrow on ESPN Eastern Time. We'll know who the four college football playoff teams are. Hey, we might know after tonight because it, it, those teams might all win. Correct. Oklahoma's already in for all intents and purposes. We have a touchback. It'll come out to the 25 for Baylor, trailing by 6, 3.59 on the clock. So you got the college football playoff selection committee keeping an eye on all the games including this one because this does factor in to the New Year's six games if Baylor wins based on tiebreakers in the Big 12 Baylor would go to the Sugar Bowl. At the Big Ten championship game Pac-12 championship ACC championship game on ABC tonight. Alabama plays Florida in the SEC title game. They get Lynx Hawthorne in at quarterback, replacing the injured Chris Johnson, who was shaken up in the first half. We've seen Hawthorne, Johnny Jefferson, Terrence Williams taking direct snaps. Play clock winding down. 75 yards away from tying the game, perhaps taking the lead. Hawthorne rolling out to try to dump it off to Cannon. A one-hopper. Incomplete. Just as I was about to say, we're going to see a heavy dose of Hawthorne remaining at quarterback for this drive because he's the only one that's got any experience throwing the football. He throws it right in the dirt. And we haven't seen Corey Coleman get a touch here in a while. He was active early in the third quarter, but of late they have not thrown it to him. They put him in the backfield a couple times to hand it off to him. Hawthorne will hand it off to Jefferson. He gets to about the 30. Picks up five. Third and five coming up here for the Bears. They have two timeouts remaining. 340 on the clock. And it's sooner or later as you continue to see Corey Coleman. And he's matched up versus Devante Davis, a true freshman on the perimeter. Be towards the top of your screen with no safety help in the middle of the field, whether it's a double move, a slant and go, hitch and go. Give him a chance downfield one on one to win the matchup versus Texas and try and get an explosive play here. They're going to keep it on the ground with Jefferson. He has no shot. Only a one yard pickup. Paul Boy out of the tackle and our Bryles knows he's got to go for it here on fourth down and four. Fourth and four and the clock is running on you. He essentially left with no choice but to throw it. I'd move the pocket here. Change the launch point, make the quarterback, Lynx Hawthorne, a run pass threat on the perimeter. That's possible. You could still punt it with your timeouts, get the ball back, but you wouldn't have a lot of time on the clock. You used the timeout earlier, so you had two left. So Browse electing to go on fourth and four. A lot of time coming off the clock here, Dave. Hawthorne will hand it off, and Jefferson has the first down. He fumbled the ball. Texas recovers. Puna Ford has made plays all game, comes up with a recovery at the 43-yard line after Jefferson had picked up the first down. Puna Ford, undersized defensive tackle from his position, just swipes at the football. You see number 95 there. Ends up recovering the ball as well. The wow. takeaway that Charlie Strong's team needed. Texas ball, 2.31 on the clock. College basketball doubleheader for you coming up next here on ESPN. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis standing by with an Arizona Gonzaga at 3.15. Then in women's college basketball, top-ranked UConn faces Notre Dame in the Jimmy V Women's Classic presented by Corona. That's a feeling echoed throughout McLean Stadium right now by Baylor fans. Trailing by six. They could still get the ball back if they can get a stop. Here's Chris Warren down to the 40. Baylor will take a timeout. One more left for the Bears. 
Let's get you caught up on what's happened here today in Waco. Early in the game, Chris Johnson, the quarterback, stuck making a second straight start, hurt on this play, turned it over, fumbled the ball, and a head injury. He leaves the game. Links Hawthorne comes in, a wide receiver, and he throws a couple interceptions, but he also makes some plays. Well, he did make some plays, and he's been counted on to be in an untenable situation of not being able to throw the football downfield and being a one-dimensional team on offense. And Baylor has handled that very, very well when you consider they're on their fourth player under center. And then they pick up the first down, running the ball on fourth down, but Johnny Jefferson then has it stripped by Puna Ford. Ford recovers. The last four games, they're minus 12 in turnover ratio. That's the worst during that span in all of college football after being in the top five through the first eight games. When you're playing teams like Oklahoma State, like TCU, like Oklahoma, you turn the football over, you're not going to have a lot of success. Here's Warren. And Warren has stood up at the 39 for no gain. So Baylor will call its final timeout. 2.20 on the clock, third down coming up. Tonight, after the Pac-12 title game, stick around for Sports Center at night with Scott Van Pelt. Highlights from all of the college football games today, plus NBA and NHL action as well. Sports Center at night. Right now, let's check in with Adnan Burke in the studio. Thank you very much, Dave. Looking forward to that NHL action there with SVP. In the meantime, some college basketball, Arizona and Gonzaga, as you just mentioned, that game starting over on ESPN News and the Watch ESPN app. It'll be over here on ESPN once your game concludes. Dave, back to you. And then we're 220 away from uh, getting it to college basketball. Now, if you're Texas, Luke's third and six, any shot of throwing the football here to try to get a first down and win the game, or do you play conservatively? Absolutely not. You play it conservatively, you run the football. If you don't get it, you punt them, you get them down inside their 10 in a perfect world scenario, because here's the key for Baylor on offense. Even if they get the ball back, all right, they're out of timeouts, and they can't throw the football, so how are they supposed to stop the clock if they can't throw the football. And we've seen so many run plays between the tackles, but when you're out of timeouts, time is short, you got to go the length of the field. That's a tall order. First things first, third down and six. Here's Swoops off the left side. There's a flag down. There was all kinds of movement. I don't know if you saw John Burt, the receiver. I think there were two guys in the backfield that were lined up incorrectly. Ball start. Offense number one. Not all 11 players were set prior to the snap. Five yard penalty, third down. That's exactly right, Dave. And the only player that didn't have the call from the sideline was John Burt. The rest of the backfield was set. Burt was jumping up and down trying to get the signal from the sideline. And late comes over and tries to get set. And that's third down and 11. Baylor trying to get the football back and hope for a prayer to win a game and get into a New Year's Six game. Otherwise, it's probably Oklahoma State based on tiebreakers that would get the second spot in Big 12 and replace Oklahoma in the Sugar Bowl. Here's Warren taken down to the 41. So the clock will run. Texas will punt the ball here. And they'll snap it with about 1.36 or 7 on the clock. Now they're really going to put Baylor in a difficult situation as we've talked about throughout the game on their fourth quarterback now who's a receiver links Hawthorne. How do they throw the football to get back into this without a timeout a critical critical punting situation here Dave for Texas to not allow this ball to go into the end zone. And Michael Dixon the punter you mentioned that earlier that when they needed a big punt from him that he, that he got one he pinned Baylor deep as uh, Texas is going to take the clock down and call a timeout or no they're not going to call a timeout they're just going to accept a delay of game penalty offense five yard penalty fourth down all right so 134 left Texas will set up to punt the football here links Hawthorne saying all right I got a chance to send my team to a New Year's six game by coming up with uh, a miracle First things first, Dixon going to try to pin Coleman deep. Now, Coleman is signaled for a fair catch almost every time. I wonder if they're giving him the green light here to try to return one. Taylor okay, going to come after the punt here. And 
It bounces inside the 10. Texas is all over it. Baylor's going to have to go 96 yards. Great job by Dixon. Chris Boyd was down there for the Longhorns to make sure it didn't go into the end zone. Out and about on this final college football Saturday of the regular season in FBS. Don't miss any of the action while you're on the go. Stream any game live. Download the Watch ESPN app or go to watchespn.com. Well, Baylor does lead the FBS in most touchdown drives in two minutes or less, but that's when they had Seth Russell, Jarrett Stidham, or Chris Johnson. Now they got Lynx Hawthorne, essentially their four-string quarterback. And a multitude of explosive plays from all of their perimeter players, and that hasn't been the case here today. They had a 97-yard touchdown drive earlier this season with Russell, the quarterback. Hawthorne with a quick throw. They set up the screen for Cannon. He gets out of bounds, so they get about eight there to the 12-yard line. Only take a few seconds off the clock, and they just keep doing that downfield. Well, what they're going to end up having to do is take a shot downfield. We talked earlier before about Corey Coleman, Katie Cannon. They're matched up against true freshmen on the perimeter for Texas here on defense. Hawthorne going to take off and run. First downs will stop the clock. Hawthorne inside the 40, down to the 42. Elliott on the tackle. The clock will stop with a minute 12 to go. They're at their own 42-yard line. No timeouts for the Bears. Now the clock begins on the ready for play. Hawthorne will throw in trouble, being chased. And he throws it away. That ball did not get past the line of scrimmage. He was outside the pocket. Was there a receiver in the area? No, there was not. That's why they're going to call grounding here. And that's because he's not quarterback. He doesn't remember what he's supposed to do. He's got to get it through the neutral zone when you're outside the pocket unless there is a receiver in the area. Baylor coaches right now trying to point to KD Cannon on the sideline as being in the vicinity. He might have crept into the vicinity late though. Intentional ground on the offense. Be a loss of down at the spot of the foul. It'll be third down. It's a big play there again Hawthorne not used to doing this. Probably didn't know what he's supposed to do rule wise. And you got to get it past the 42. And he was just throwing it out of bounds. That's the issue is you see Terrence Williams number 22 the tailback in front of him but he throws it out of bounds well before the line of scrimmage. And now it's third down and 26. Excuse me second down and 26 with a minute and two remaining. Here's Coleman, big hole. Can he keep his feet? He does. He's at the 45 and pushed out of bounds near midfield. How does Texas let that happen? Well, what does Baylor do? They put the ball into the hands of their best player, make sure it starts with him. They're going to put him right back in the backfield next to Terrence Williams right now. And look at these guys running with some tempo without a true quarterback as Lynx Hawthorne comes back in. Third and two. Williams is slammed to the ground. Ball by Paul Boyette for a loss. It's fourth and three, and they got to hustle. They got to run a play, but they got to make sure they're set. They got to get to the 48 of Texas. Clocks at 40 seconds. Taking a lot of time off the clock. Hawthorne throws. Here's Cannon, and he gets the first down and steps out to stop the clock with 30 seconds left at the Texas 46. And Baylor was confused there. A multitude of receivers aligned up close to being illegally aligned, and Corey Coleman did not know what the play was as the number three inside receiver out of the slot. They got Hawthorne under center here. Quick throw, and Jay Lee was going to pass the ball. And now he's in trouble and he goes down. Baylor's got to hurry and get up and snap the ball. They were trying to set up a double pass. Lynx Hawthorne, the quarterback, ran downfield, but he was double covered. 12 seconds left. Hawthorne spikes it to stop the clock with 10 seconds to go. So they were going to do the trick play, Tom, but right. Texas read it well. And that's a play that they initially had run with RG3. In the early days of Art Briles' tenure here at Baylor, where you throw the ball, and the quarterback actually goes through the line of scrimmage to sneak out. Texas stayed at home in the defensive back end, and now, Dave, the question becomes, 
do you have the arm to actually get the ball downfield to put yourself in a position here? Aaron Rodgers ain't walking through that door. No, he is not. <laughs> Ten seconds left. Hawthorne looks like a punt, and it is broken up. With four seconds left, Davion Hall had a chance to pull it in. And Charlie Strong going to call a timeout. If he doesn't double catch or make an attempt on the double catch right there and comes down with this football, Baylor's in good shape. Although you wonder if he catches it, do they have enough time to get down there? They would stop the clock, clock reset the chains, but then on the ready for play, can you get under there with a guy who's not used to, to spiking the ball and do it in time? That's the difficulty and the challenge for a situation here that you don't have a contingency plan for. You know, you can work your first quarterback and your second quarterback and your third quarterback, but for Baylor, coming into this week, it was a walk-on option or moving receivers and running backs into the backfield, and that's what they've chosen to do, and, and it's been an admirable effort, but when you become that one-dimensional, it's so difficult. If I'm Charlie Strong now, it's very clear that Lynx Hawthorne can't get the ball anywhere near the goal line. Keep the ball in front of you on defense, Texas. The only other quarterback that they have is a true freshman walk-on in Zach Benema. And actually, Hawthorne's not in the game. They, 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 they probably said, who's got the best arm? And they, they think it's Johnny Jefferson, so they put him in. Or they're going to do some short throws and try and lateral this thing downfield if they feel that's an even better option to juggle the ball around a little bit amongst their playmakers. Texas has three men deep. Here goes Jefferson, and he's going to fire it into traffic, and it is intercepted, and the game is over. They rule incomplete, but it doesn't matter. Zero's on the clock, and Texas wins. The Longhorns finish the season five and seven. In an otherwise terrible year for Texas, they beat both Oklahoma and Baylor. For Tom Luganville, Laura Rutledge, I'm Dave Pash. College Hoops up next. Arizona and Gonzaga. Dan Schulman.